Hello everybody, welcome to my channel, Victoria here at Radiant Moon Tarot. We are talking about the new moon in Pisces for you guys today. The new moon in Pisces occurs on the 19th or 20th of February of 2023, depending on where you are on the planet. Check your time zones to see exactly when that, uh, when that really does hit its fullest potential. The moon energies do last, we get about a week of benefit. Um, the moon energy starts to come in a few days before the new moon and uh, the big energy starts to leave a few days after. So we get about three days on either side plus the new moon day. So this new moon in Pisces is really very magical. Um, Pisces itself is very spiritual energy, very creative energy. This is bringing in your imagination, um, opening your heart space, uh, really connecting with your intuition, with all of your higher senses. Great energy in and of itself for some meditation, um, for really doing something a little bit interesting that maybe you wouldn't normally do. So it's really this very flowy, very um, magical kind of energy. So this new moon can certainly represent a very exciting turning point for a lot of people. This does represent endings, beginnings, um, as I already said, creative, intuitive, and dreamy energy. We do have Saturn in uh, Aquarius still. It's a very late, uh, late there. Um, and it's conjunct to the sun and the moon, which is in Pisces. So we've got this Aquarian um, Pisces connection coming in here. So really what that means is that your intuition will take hold, your creative side, right? Your... Um, your spiritual side will take over. And, but then with that Aquarian energy, it's like we've get these bursts of ideas. We figure out how to take logical steps to make our dreams happen. So it's like first we dream about it and then we execute something. We get something in motion there. So very, um, very watery, but also very uh, logical and futuristic in its way of thinking with that Aquarius energy. So this is really important right now with this new moon to focus your energy on what is really important to you. This is a perfect time to manifest your dreams into reality. Neptune rules Pisces. Saturn is, so that's your dream. And Saturn is your realization of your dream. So what are you dreaming about? What are you wishing for? Where do you see yourself going? What changes do you want to make in your life? What uh, do you see or foresee happening in the future? Set your intentions and focus on that energy. Neptune is also conjunct Venus in Pisces. Now this is <laughs> very romantic. This is the most romantic aspect possible. A lot of love in the air. Now, of course, love comes in many forms. Love is the highest vibration of all. This is uh, self-love, love of family, friends, love of what you do, love of what you create, love of life. This is bringing in a lot of compassion, a sense of unity, your ability to open up, meet new people. Um, but also brings in an energy of forgiveness and really connecting with your higher self. So embrace all this beautiful energy that is around us at this time. It's also important to look at completions at this time. What do you need to release to make room for the new? This is a time where you really have an ability here to let go of the things that have been seemingly immovable in your world and to open up and be flexible in that Pisces energy. So we, we essentially do um, really combine your logic with your intuition. Okay, so your logical sense will say, hey, this is where you have resistance. This is where you have blocks. This is what needs to get gone. All right, because we got some magic coming in here for you. So the important, uh, the really important aspect of this new moon in Pisces and what makes it, makes it so special, makes it so magical, is that Saturn 
is at one degree of Pisces, okay, in this new moon. But this is activated multiple times throughout 2023. So it's like we have multiple jumping off points to realize our goals and our dreams. So we get this activation um, about three more times throughout the year. So what you set in motion now, you can actually um, achieve in those increments. So we can really get these big bursts, almost like pulses of energy. So it's almost like having four new moon and Pisces energies throughout the year because of this connection with Saturn. So it's really um, a big energetic boost. It helps create something wonderful of lasting value something that's not just fly by night, something that sticks, something that stays. So the important dates are, of course, the new moon in Pisces um, occurring in February. We also have March 16th through 24th. Okay, that's where we're going to have this Saturn Pisces connection again, September 22nd to October 11th and November 28th to December 15th. So we've got all this magic to work with at multiple points throughout the year. So connect with your intuition, connect with your higher self, meditate, connect with nature. Um, what do you want to manifest? Okay. Dream big. If you had that star to wish upon, right? Wish upon that star, rub the magic genie's lamp, whatever, uh, whatever gets your energy flowing and going. Okay. It is that time to set those intentions. So we're going to get into um, each sign here and we're just going to do a quick little message for each sign. Uh, all of your timestamps will be down in the description box down below so you don't necessarily have to watch the whole video unless of course you are so inclined. Make sure for sure that you watch your sun and rising sign but your moon sign is also going to be very important for you as well. Um, and of course because we do have this uh, Neptune Venus uh, connection all in Pisces you may want to watch your Venus as well, representing love and abundance and beauty and creativity all flowing in your life there as well. So uh, anyways, watch all of those to get your big picture. So let's get right into it, folks, and let's see what the new moon is specifically bringing in for each one of your signs. We will start with Aries. We'll just go in order. And once again, all the timestamps in the box down below. If you do, by the way, find that you uh, enjoy this video, this reading, please don't forget to uh, show my channel a little bit of support and just hit that like button there and hit that subscribe button as well. Feel free to, of course, leave comments in the box down below. How is this new moon aligning? with you and your dreams right now okay so all of that really does help uh, crack the algorithm if you will in the YouTube world so I thank you guys for watching timestamps below let's get going hello Aries welcome to your new moon in Pisces reading this new moon is occurring in your 12th astrological house now your 12th house is ruled by Neptune and Pisces so this is a big dreamy energy for you all right this is really encouraging you to make room to prepare for manifestations dreams entering your life of course, we are coming up on your astrological new year, on your birthday, and so the new moon in the 12th house really does help you realize what you want or really see what needs to come to an end. The 12th house is endings, right? It can be endings. This can be your dreams. This can be things that have been hidden or things that you have kept hidden, okay? This can be things coming to light. So it can be a very emotional um, connection with this moon. Moon, but it can also be very magical okay so um, really take that all into consideration what are your big dreams where do you feel stuck right now um, what do you need to disconnect from what have you been ignoring right sometimes we bury things okay so we all want to get you prepared for your new year and we have your first quarter moon in Pisces honor your feelings okay so you may at this um, moment in time have some feelings that do come up to the surface again maybe something that you've been ignoring that you haven't wanted to deal with okay and sometimes when we do ascend we evolve we grow 
um, we're making positive change in our life or we're getting ready to welcome in the new, what quite often happens is because we are expanding our vibration, raising our consciousness there, um, we do quite often find things that um, we have kept buried for a while, right? Because what we do as humans is sometimes we push things out into the great beyond. And then as we expand our energy, we find what we have um, put in that great beyond and we need to deal with it, right? We need to work through some things. So honor your feelings, okay? All the good feelings, the bad feelings, um, everything, right? And really connect emotionally to yourself, okay? And uh, it can only benefit you. Let's see what else we've got here. We've got the Page of Swords. We've got the Three of Swords in reverse, beautiful. And we've got the Page of Pentacles. Well, if this doesn't set you up for some manifestation, I don't know what does. All right, we've got the Page of Swords. Now, this quite often is associated with some Aquarian energy here. There's that air sign energy bringing in your logic, your intellect, your ability to open your mind and expand your horizons. The Page of Swords is always excited about what is to come, is always very open-minded, always very communicative, straight and to the point, okay, but also is looking to the future, it is always willing to try the new and the different and the exciting. So really crystal clear communication and logically thinking, what do I need to cut out of my life here? We use the sword that comes in with the page of sword to help release and detach from anything that has been keeping you stuck. Three of swords in reverse. And the Three of Swords in reverse does represent a big opportunity to heal something that has been lingering for a while. Okay, and sometimes this is just feeling down in the dumps about you know, the energy that's around us, right? Sometimes it's letting too much of the external energy that's around us affect us internally, but it can also be specific events in there as well. It can also be like those, um, those blocks, right? The, you know, it's like, I can't see the future. I can't see the forest through the trees, you know, and sometimes we, we do get a little bit wrapped up in our heads. So we're releasing here in this energy for you, we're releasing anything that has been keeping you um, in a certain um, energy for a while or it's been keeping you stuck or feeling like you've been going around and round and round and with no way to get off the merry-go-round so this is that time to open up allow this beautiful healing energy and open your heart because ultimately you are a manifesting page of pentacles new beginnings into your world the page of pentacles can certainly represent something that you're learning, um, especially about yourself, your goals, your dreams. Okay. But this is also about something that you are wanting to create. You're wanting to manifest something in. It does represent the page of pentacles, right? Two pages, a lot of new, fresh energy coming in here for you, knocking at your door. Um, so the pentacles can certainly represent your money, your career, um, where you spend your money, perhaps uh, getting rid of old spending habits, maybe. But you're part of your dream here may be a sense of stability, security, and attracting all kinds of prosperity and abundance into your life with that page of pentacles. And you might just need to make little minor tweaks in where you are right now, just to elevate yourself to the next level. Okay, or maybe you are really looking to uh, try something brand new, just wipe the slate clean, whatever you've got going on, you're learning new things, you've got an open mind. And the page of pentacles reminds us that prosperity is yours. Okay, but sometimes we do need to remember patience, right? It's just like when we're planting a seed, we plant a seed in the soil, we water it, we nurture it, we fertilize it, but we don't obsess over it or we'll kill it, right? Um, we don't smother it, we just allow it to blossom and grow. And it does take time for that seed to grow into a plant where we can harvest um, what we have what we have planted. So a little bit of patience is a virtue. But again, remember all of these um, increments throughout 2023 with this new moon energy that is around us from that Pisces new moon. So it's like a little one little step at a time and eventually you will get to where you want to really be and really realize your manifestations. So some very exciting energy that is coming in for you. A lot of new, a lot of potential in your world. So let's just grab um, an Angels of Abundance card and see what they have to say for you. Thank you very much. Let's see what we've got. 
and we have take a divinely guided chance. Sometimes we need to, sometimes we need to just get excited like that page of swords and just go for it. All positive change and successful ventures involve a degree of risk and you are ready to follow your divine guidance to new territories. As you leave behind that which is comfortable and familiar but no longer appropriate for you, you make room for new and more meaningful opportunities. Take that to the bank there, folks, all right? And we have bountiful nature, beautiful. Spending time in nature helps shift you to a higher vibration and reminds you of the universe's infinite abundance. Go outside and enjoy a walk or a hike with your pet. Meditate beneath a tree, garden, sit under stars, or do some other activity to connect you with the limited vastness. All right, limitless, excuse me, vastness, vastness. All right, unlimited. There we go. We'll say that a little bit better. All right, so nature is the key to being grounded, especially with your 12th house energy, right? You have a tendency to float away. Okay, so be grounded in your energy and connect with nature. It'll really help you manifest something into your reality. So I'll leave that there for you, Aries. Good luck with this new moon. Okay, and uh, manifest your dreams. We'll move on now to Pisces, or no, sorry to Taurus. Jeez. <laughs> Hello, Taurus. Welcome to your new moon in Pisces reading. This new moon is occurring in your 11th astrological house. Uh, you might really be, um, the 11th house is ruled by Uranus and Aquarius, and you might be really focused on people right about now. Your social groups, your connections, the people who you spend time with, um, you might be making some changes in your social grouping. Um, you might be getting outside and meeting new people. Um, you might be looking at um, maybe even creating a group of like-minded people, people who you can really feel the same vibe with and who you can really bounce some ideas off of or just feel that connection with. So um, a lot of people uh, of all kinds may really um, or may really uh, influence and be part of this new moon energy. So perhaps you're manifesting those new connections. Um, perhaps you are clearing house in some way there as well, right? And as we do evolve, we do sometimes find that we just don't feel connected with the people in our world anymore. And it's time to meet some new people and get out and spread your wings. But the 11th house does also have to do with your wishes, your goals, the future. What does the future hold for you? Where do you see things manifesting in your world? If you were to look um, a, a year from now, what, what would you want to manifest in? What would you want to materialize uh, in your world? Where do you want to see some changes, some positive growth for yourself? So keep an open mind being in that Aquarian energy and don't be afraid to shake things up just a little bit. Change itself tends to be uncomfortable, even positive change. Okay, positive change. Um, a positive, all change is positive. Okay. But it doesn't always feel that way when we're going through it. But then when we see the results, we're like, Oh my God, that was so good for me. I didn't think it at the time. So look into the future and don't be afraid to make change. We have full moon and Taurus energy. There you go. You are coming out here and we've got detoxify. What do you need to release? Okay. Full moon energy is all about release, letting go, finding forgiveness, um, looking at the things that have been holding us back. What do we need to uh, see through to completion, right? What are we done with? Okay, so detoxify your world, all right? And the things that benefit you, because this is your energy here, Taurus, right? So you know, what do you, what is no longer working for you? What is holding you back? What is creating toxicity of any level in your life? Time to push that out the door. Okay, time to use a sword of light. Call an Archangel Michael for a little bit of help there. And it's time to get rid of that. Okay, prepare yourself for the new and the beautiful and the better. Okay, now you had... Um, eclipses in your sign last year. So there may be something that is about to come in for you in the very near future that you have manifested during those eclipses that occurred in your sign. 
Okay, and we are at about, uh, we are coming up to about the six month mark, right? Usually eclipses are about, uh, the energy lasts for about six months in that cycle. Okay, so between now and the next eclipse, the next couple of months, there may be something that is blossoming in your world as a result of previous manifestations that you have done, things coming to completion. So Spirit's really wanting to get you into full-on receiving mode. We've got the King of Swords, the Queen of Pentacles, and we've got the Six of Pentacles. There, wow, okay. Uh, gifts, things coming to fruition, things being handed to you, flow of abundance coming into your world. Why? Because you are in balance, you're in harmony um, with the things around you. You've been patient, um, and I think you have a deep inner knowing that something is shifting in your reality here, okay? You've taken the lead, you've taken charge, you've taken your time, you haven't smothered any goals or dreams, right? And you're um, very much getting into receiving mode here with this energy. So when we get the King of Swords, uh, the Kings kings are conquerors, right? The Kings have always successfully um, mastered something or overcome some things, right? And the King of Swords is all about logic, intellect, reason. Uh, we've got that um, air sign energy coming in with that Aquarian influence, okay? And, you know, here you are, you're uh, getting clarity, a sense of purpose. You're firmly making decisions. You're cutting things out of, out of your life that, um, you know, to make room for the new. All right. And you know exactly what you need to do. The King of Swords, very smart, very intellectual, very logical, um, is very knowledgeable in what the King of Swords doesn't know. You have the ability to find out the information that you need. Okay. And, but also crystal clear communication at that knowing that clarity. Okay. Knowing what to do, knowing what to say and trusting your intuition and your inner wisdom with that energy. Now we also have the queen of pentacles here also. All right. And the queen of pentacles, of course, is all about abundance blossoming in your life. Okay. Um, things coming to fruition for you. You're about to harvest um, reap the rewards of something that you've sown. This also shows here the power of intention with that King of Swords, okay? Set your intentions with this new moon. Dream big, wish upon that star, right? And be very clear about what you want to attract into your life with that Queen of Pentacles. And then we need to release and let go. We need to be patient, all right, in that energy, we need to, you know, nurture ourselves, our goals, our dreams without smothering them or overwatering them, or over tending our garden, so to speak. And if you do not have a, a green thumb and if you tend to kill plants, you know exactly what I'm talking about. You either neglect them forever and then they wither up and die because they're thirsty or you over um, you over tend to them and then you smother them, right? And they also die. So, um, you know, we don't want to do either one of those things. We want to find that healthy equilibrium right there in the middle. We want to give our dreams the amount of attention and nurturing that they need to grow and blossom without smothering them or neglecting them in any way. But we do need to be patient, right? And we do need to be open to new experiences, to new things and to receiving, our abundance that is meant for us but we do need to be willing to also make change as well but this is a beautiful balanced energy between the masculine and the feminine whatever your situation happens to be all right so it's beautiful energy but ultimately we do have the six of pentacles so the six of pentacles is things um really coming back to you, okay, in life, right? What you put out there, the Six of Pentacles, always a reminder of the law of giving and receiving the energy, that the intentions, uh, the vibrations that we put out into the universe return to us multiplied, okay? So for some of you, there might be a little bit of a surprise headed your way, all right? And you're prepared to receive, okay? You are in this energy where it's like, you know what? thank you very much. This is great. This is what I've been waiting for. All right. And so I think it's something that may come in as a little bit unexpected, um, but something that is very welcome. This can be um, a little bit of money coming in. This can be that bonus that you've been waiting for and that you've been working towards. This could be a job offer. This can be a house, a home. This can just be um, 
and some information that can really help you on your journey. But whatever it is, there's some receiving energy. There's something coming in here um, and something a little bit better than what you expected because quite often that Six of Pentacles, we get things, what we've put out, we get the return on our investment quite often multiplied at least sixfold and always something very welcome. The Six of Pentacles is also an energy of balance. Okay, and may, keep your balance, okay? Keep your balance there and that energy. What is throwing you off balance? What is creating a little bit of dissension in your life there? Okay, and remember that detoxify energy. Balance is the key, okay? We always need, we all have the divine feminine and the divine masculine within us, right? The yin and the yang, the the positive, the negative, right? The push, the pull. We all have that within us and, and in our environment, and it's all about finding that equilibrium, right? Um, if you've ever been on a teeter-totter in the playground and you're standing on it, you know exactly where that balance point is so that that teeter-totter is straight across. And that's what you're being encouraged to do here as well, right? Is to find that um, equilibrium there so that your teeter-totter of life is right there on that even keel. And it's amazing how much magic can flow around us when we are in that mode, right? It's like, ooh, who I am a magician. So things blossoming in your life, okay? But remember, the energy, the intentions that you put out, boom, comes back to you at some point. Face your financial fears, okay? That can be a big block for a lot of people, all right? And this is something that we're detoxifying from. When you are honest with yourself about fears of success or failure, they can no longer control you. Be free of hidden fears by exposing them to the light of awareness and you'll realize that you in fact have nothing to fear and that every successful person has struggled with and released these self-doubts, okay? Um, believe it or not, some people do have, we, we all have a very interesting relationship with money, necessary evil, right? And when we don't have it, we tend to focus on it. And when we do have it, it's like, we're not worried about it. So, you know, it's important to remain in the flow. The six of pentacles is in the flow, right? We, things circulate in our lives. We spend money, we circulate it out into the universe so that it can circulate back to us, right? So don't think about um, money as spending money or something that has been lost, think about it something as going to circulate back to you, right? Because every time we spend money, there's a reason, there's a purpose, okay? And so if we think about things that way, um, then uh, it's very interesting how things do return back to us, okay? Um, a crystal that you can work with if you're uh, interested, put a piece of citrine, in your wallet. Citrine is known as the merchant stone and it does attract prosperity into your life. And if you put it in your wallet, it's connected to your money. So it wants to come back to you. Um, it is safe for you to receive. Beautiful. Consider we've got the six of pentacles, um, also the queen of pentacles. The more you allow yourself to receive, the more resources you have available to share with others. Open your arms to receive and be a conduit for good coming to you and through you as it blesses the world. Okay, big message there for you, Taurus. I'll leave that there for you. I hope you have a wonderful, magical uh, new moon in Pisces. I thank you for watching, and we're going to move on now to Gemini. Hello, Gemini. Welcome to your new moon in Pisces reading. This is occurring in your 10th astrological house. Now, this is all about your career, your reputation. Uh, this is about the public image, your public persona, how people perceive you. This can certainly be, um, you might be looking for ways to either um, build upon your current reputation to give yourself a leg up in your chosen career path. You might be right now um, using all of your past experience, the knowledge that you've gained and acquired over the years to maybe break free, go into, you know, being your own boss, open your own business, okay, or maybe make some big change in what you do for a living, right? Um, sometimes we take jobs, we follow a career path for the money, 
okay um, or because it's what we're interested in and so sometimes those things do change over time or maybe you find yourself in a position where maybe you don't aren't necessarily on the quest for um, a lot of money maybe there's some other priorities that take precedence maybe getting some emotional fulfillment from what you do for a living but your tenth house has to do with your public image fame um, the honors honors and awards so you might be manifesting a promotion you might actually be getting something that comes in something new might be coming in for you there some money um, you know a level up in your career path you might be getting recognized for what you bring to the table here as well okay so uh, you have a lot of influence over what happens in your 10th house quite often because it's your actions that have created um, these wonderful things in your world so uh, you're being very encouraged there to follow your goals and your dreams especially um, in how you make your money or things that you do get recognized for and wow, we have a lot of new new energy coming in. I was only going to get one of these cards and we got two that came out for you. But we've got new moon in Sagittarius energy. Focus on the positive, okay? Always focus on the solution, on the positive of where you want to get to or of what you want. Because wherever your energy goes, wherever your focus and attention goes, that is what you create, okay? We are always creating our own reality. Sometimes it feels we're not in control, but in actual fact, we have a lot more influence than uh, sometimes we give ourselves credit for okay but when we focus on solutions we focus on where we want to go the direction that we want to head that's where we go um, if you've ever ridden a bicycle okay you know riding your bicycle that you know if you're looking straight ahead your bicycle is going to go straight ahead but if you swivel your head to the left okay your bicycle is actually going to veer to the left as well so stay the course okay uh, stay the course focus on where you're headed okay and focus on the positives that you want to blossom um, in your world we also have the new moon in Leo energy and I love this coming in for you okay your time to shine this is your reputation this is your honors this is the things that people see you for it's time to let your light shine it's time to create something wonderful and abundant into your world it's time believe in yourself be bold be brave go where no man has gone before go where you've been afraid to go before okay this is really your time to be in that spotlight there and with that um with that shine energy the new moon in leo with your 10th house there might just be something that is really coming into alignment for you okay because when we get recognized um, sometimes we do get, you know, just like, you know, some sort of recognition within like our work group or something, you know, uh, you know, I'd like to congratulate Pisces. They really did this. They got our company back on track, you know, something like that. Um, but this can also be, if you're looking to make a change, your resume stands out. There's something about you in an interview that stands out. Um, this is you really, um, being true and authentic to who you are and allowing people to see the magic that is within you and the possibilities that you bring with your energy. So it's really your time to stand out in the crowd there, um, whatever that looks like for you. Okay. So if you do get rewarded or recognized for something, a little bit of humility with right? that Taurus energy keeps you grounded. Okay. Um, you know, just be just be open and receive. Just say thank you. Um, and, you know, be grateful for everything that you already have, too. So that way more things to be grateful for will manifest in your world as well. Okay, so a lot of magic, a lot of blossoming energy and abundance in your world there. Be like that sunflower. Face the sun and shine. So let's see what else we've got here. We've got the Queen of Swords, the Three of Swords in reverse, and the Knight of Cups all coming out here for you. So I like this for you, okay? Number one, the Queen of Swords. You know what you want, okay? You know what you want. You know what you need to put an end to. You know what ba barriers or not barriers, excuse me, boundaries you need to put in your life to make the best choices for you. You are trusting your own sense of logic of intuition your wisdom okay is really shining for you communication
intuition is very much the key, okay? And, you know, I think you're getting clarity and a lot of focus. The Queen of Swords energy can really help you to put up some boundaries, to be open and receptive, okay? But not... um over speak. So if you're, so the queen of swords is very open and welcoming energy, very truthful, very honest energy. Um, but also knows when to shut up. <laughs> okay. For lack of a better word. So if you were in a job interview, let's say, okay. And you know, you're of course being asked about yourself, you're selling yourself essentially in a job interview, right? Communication, crystal clear on point, very honest, very truthful, very open with the Queen of Swords, but with a boundary. So if you're talking about yourself, the Queen of Swords energy will help you to know when to stop talking about yourself because there's a fine line between selling yourself and then coming across as a know-it-all or arrogant or just talking too much. All right. So the Queen of Swords energy will help you not talk too much. Talk just enough to get your point across, but then know when to shut your yap. All right. That can be a very, very important energy because sometimes we can talk ourselves into something just as easily as we can talk ourselves out of something. Okay. A little bit of discernment as far as communication goes with that queen of swords energy. All right. But the queen of swords, yes, we can certainly put up some very healthy boundaries. The three of swords in reverse here shows that there has been something that has been holding you back. Okay. There's been something that has been creating this stuck or negative energy. Okay. And this is bringing in some healing and the queen of swords energy is helping you to cut this out. Okay. Whatever fears, worries, doubts, whatever old belief systems, um, you know, whatever resistance has been um, uh, in your life and preventing you from moving forward, okay, that Queen of Swords, right, we're using that sword to put up those boundaries and release any kind of stuck energy. Also helping you to open your heart, albeit maybe a little bit cautiously with that Queen of Swords, a little bit cautious, which is fine, okay, but open nonetheless, all right? So sometimes it's a little bit difficult to get yourself out there or to really let your light shine in the most positive of ways, especially if we've had things that haven't gone our way or if we've, you know, just been through a period where things have been a little bit tough, Okay, and we kind of maybe sometimes lose a little bit of connection with ourselves and we doubt ourselves in some way. Okay, so there's some healing energy that is coming in here and this release of things, um, release of things that have held you back. All right. This also harkens some positive change for you as well, especially if you are in an environment or you're somewhere where it's just not doing it for you. Okay, you're maybe not getting recognized for you know, how much you really do or for the cont contributions that you make. And this can be certainly this energy here where, nope, you know what, it's time for something new and different. I, it's time for me to step into my own personal power in the most positive of ways and get what I'm looking for. It's time for me to get my rewards. So this can just be you just going, uh-uh, I am done. I am moving forward. And we do have the Knight of Cups here as well. So where we've had, you know, some challenges in our energy, okay, now we're opening up, okay? We're healing, we're growing, we're in full-on creation mode. The Knight of Cups, for some of you, can certainly represent that there is some heartfelt um, rewards or recognition that is headed your way, okay? The Knight of Cups can quite often be a gift, Okay, whether it's um, whether it's some financial gift or whether it's just some words, whatever it happens to be, the Knight of Cups is something that is coming in for you that can make you very, very happy. Okay, this can also be you finding a better way. You're opening your heart. You're getting creative. You're following your goals and dreams. Very dreamy energy that comes in with the Knight of Cups, right? Very open hearted, right? But it's there's just this like, you know what? I'm very positive. I'm going to follow my dreams. I'm going to take my steps forward and I am sure of myself, right? The nights are always full of passion and energy and vigor and always very, very sure of themselves, right? It's like, nope, this is the steps. This is direct the direction that I'm going to take and um, I'm happy to be doing it. All right. So you're following your heart, your goals, your dreams in this energy and you're open to receive, right? So um, releasing any kind of blocks or resistance is always beneficial and, you know, don't forget with this particular new moon, we are having a look to see what we need to put an end to, right? What endings do we need to um, really 
focus on in order to clear the path and make way for the new. All right, so a uh, little bit of, a lot of air sign energy that is coming in here, and that's that Saturn energy, that Aquarian influence that's coming in, okay? Um, and it really does help with the dreamy, quite uh, the dreamy qualities that come in with the Pisces energy, okay? It's like, yes, I've connected with my heart, with my intuition, with my creative self, but I'm also being very logical in my thinking and I'm trusting my wisdom and I'm communicating in the most positive of ways, but I'm not afraid to cut anything out of my life that's creating resistance and blocks or the stuck energy. So it's like a, a very complementary energy in the in a very interesting way. So let's see what else we've got here for you. And we've got unlimited ideas, expansion of your mind, expansion of your heart. Beautiful. Your mind is one with God, spirit, and the universe's infinite mind. Therefore, you have complete access to unlimited ideas guaranteed to bring blessings. All you need to do is take divinely guided action to allow these ideas to come to fruition. Hello, Knight of Cups. Okay, so take some action detox your friendships your abundance flow is being affected by the people with whom you're spending time so be discerning about your associations and relationships choose to be with the people who are inspiring generous and supportive and you know as we grow as we evolve through our lives we do have people friends connections that stay with us for many 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 years but we also have those ones where they're not meant to be with us for the next 30 40 50 60 years right they're meant to be with us for two years or three years or five years and you know and sometimes we do lose those connections okay because we're not the same person we grow we evolve we connect with our higher selves and as we do that okay we do find that we're just not on the same page with certain people in our lives or we recognize things because we are more open and we're trusting all of our senses a little bit more okay we recognize the people that are actually creating a little bit of toxicity they don't mean to necessarily okay um we don't usually purposely surround ourselves with negative people but um you know so quite often people don't realize that this is what they're doing but sometimes this is what we need to recognize right so you may have be having some sort of epiphany moment about the connections in your life with this new moon okay so I'm gonna leave that there for you guys I hope there was something here in your reading have a glorious new moon in Pisces and really embrace all of this new energy coming in for you all right so I thank you for watching and we're gonna move on to cancer Hello Cancer, welcome to your new moon in Pisces reading. This new moon is occurring in your ninth astrological house. So this, you might be um, looking at making some travel plans right about now. The ninth house has to do with long distance travel. Okay, so you might be going on a trip imminently, okay? Or maybe you're like, you know what? I've been stuck at home for the last three years. Um, this pandemic has really kind of, you know, clipped my wings a little bit. And so you might be making some plans um, to go on a nice little adventure somewhere. Now, this adventure, this travel could have something to do. It could have a learning element to it. The ninth house is about expansion of your mind. Um, this has to do with your big ideas. Um, you know, so you might be expanding your mind in some way. Okay, but, you know, maybe a little bit of a vacation to a foreign land somewhere may just be what the doctor ordered. It might be what you need right now. This is the ninth house is really focused on on your belief systems as well breaking down barriers okay reassessing what you do believe in um, you know perhaps you are learning a little bit more about your spiritual self or you're recognizing um, you know something about organized religions there as well all right you may be looking at things a little bit more philosophically than you used to um, but really but we've got this ninth house energy with a lot of big ideas, okay, and coupled with the um, Pisces energy, the new moon, Neptune, Venus, um, you might just have some big, big, big uh, ideas of something that you want to create. Now, this could be um, a project that you want to do. This can be something that, you know, 
maybe you've always wanted to learn with the ninth house being in your higher mind. Okay, so maybe you do want to learn something. Um, this can be something fun and exciting, or maybe this is something a little bit more intellectual. All right, but this is big creative kind of energy to put your big ideas Okay, into reality. I've got this idea. How do I how do I make this work in the real world? So you could be finding that connection. So um, we do have a little bit of an expansive energy. We also do have a little bit of soul searching, right? The ninth house um, in here. So you might be doing a little bit of um, soul searching at this moment as well. Who am I? Um, who am I? What is my life purpose? Where am I meant to be? Right. So you might be asking some big, big questions. We have full moon and Scorpio energy breathe through the tension. Now, this is interesting. And of course, this new moon, of course, like we already said, brings about some endings, okay? Um, things that we need to put an end to in order to clear the path forward, okay? So breathe through the, te the tension. There might be something around you that is causing you to ball up right? To be like a big ball of anxiety or, um, you know, that just kind of makes you a little bit worried or afraid or tense, right? Um, in your energy, it could be a person, it could be an environment, it may be fear. Um, but there might be some changes that you need to make and you're like, I'm going to power through. I know I need to do this thing, but man, oh man, oh man, I might, do I ever feel a little bit afraid? Okay. So work through that, breathe through that, connect with your higher self, big, deep breaths in, hold them for two, three seconds, and then boom, a big whoosh of air to release it back out. It's amazing how working with your breath can relieve stress and tension. Does it solve the problems around you? No, not necessarily, but it can really help center and ground your energy and it can really put you in a different energetic space to deal with things in a little bit of a different way or to open yourself up a little bit to making the next steps forward to making change or to uh you know recognizing the benefits to you know to making positive change or letting things go in your world now this is scorpio energy Okay. And of course, in 2022, we had uh, eclipses in Scorpio and eclipse energy lasts about six months. So something that you have set in motion within the last six months, specifically at that um, either in Scorpio season or at the new moon in Scorpio, full moon in Scorpio, the eclipses. Okay. Something may be coming to fruition for you right now. Now this could be the end of a cycle, the end of a journey in that regard, right? Especially if you've been working on something, you're like getting this sense of completion now. Okay. But this is also here. You're right on the cusp of something and you're being very encouraged here to make space. Okay, because there's some gifts, there's something, doors opening for you, there's something opening up for you in the very near future. Okay, so be open and welcome to some very important changes in your world, um, in your way of thinking, and in your energy. So we have, ooh, very interesting, we've got the Two of Cups. We've got the Four of Cups in reverse, and we've got the King of Pentacles. Now, I've got to say, I think you're um, you're the fourth reading, and I think uh, three of them have had a reversal right in the middle somewhere, okay? And when we get a reversal right in the middle, it's like, oh, something there we need to deal with so that we can move forward. But the Two of Cups here can certainly represent things coming together for you. The Two of Cups can represent the people, the partnerships in your life. You might be meeting new people right now, but this is also where you do connect with your higher self. You connect with your higher energy, your higher chakras, your higher mind. The Two of Cups also does bring in a sense of balance and harmony in your world here as well. Okay, so a lot of wonderful energy coming into alignment for you internally within yourself, right? It's a period of expansion and growth, but also really connecting with your higher senses. All right, it's beautiful. But 
The two of cups can also represent decisions, making decisions from the heart. What's going to make you happy? Okay. Is it people in your life? Is it different environments? Um, is it just you recognizing the blessings that you have in your life? And when we do recognize the blessings, we count our blessings and we're thankful for them. We get more things to be thankful for. We do have the four of cups and that is in the reverse. So normally the four of cups in the upright is a feeling of you know, being um, annoyed or bored or fed up with situations, right? It's like there's something coming in, but we're tired of waiting. Okay, so I think here in this Four of Cups energy, I think you've been <laughs> waiting for something to open up for a while. And, you know, you've been feeling the tension, right? So we're letting go. Um, we're letting go of this energy. And this is that tension energy, right? It's like, oh, man, you know, I really want this thing. I really want to make this change. Um, I really want to fix this and I can't. And ugh, I'm just so done. I'm done with life. I'm done with the situation. I'm just done. Okay. And no, 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 no. We're throwing that energy out the window. So instead of feeling a little bit closed off, because sometimes the four of pentacles, we do feel a little bit closed off, right? We do feel like, I uh, forget it. I give up, right? This is not working for me. And so we're throwing that out the window. All right. We're healing from that energy and we're being a little bit more open and getting ready to receive. We're opening up our mind. We're opening up our energy here. And, um, you know, we are certainly letting something go. So it could be some tension. There are some issues that do come in with that four of cups. Um, it could be that someone has an, uh, someone gave you something or there's something in your life and you're like, I don't want it. I don't want it. I'm willing to let it go. Right. Um, so there might be something there that you do need to detach from because it's affecting the balance in your world. It's affecting you from following your goals and your dreams. Right. Whatever that looks like for you. All right. But ultimately, we also have the king of pentacles here. So we do have some things blossoming in your world. OK. Now, this could be a second chance on something, especially with that four of cups in reverse, something you've completely given up on, okay, or you completely let go of, right, is actually a benefit for you because it's welcoming in something um, better than what you originally thought. The king of pentacles, you could certainly be having uh, something rewarding coming into your life with this new moon, but your ability to attract abundance and prosperity, um, new beginnings or success, uh, knowledge, information into your world is impeccable right about now. The Kings is like a mastery of skill. Okay. It's like, I'm the King of the castle. I'm feeling good. I'm feeling confident. Okay. But I'm also very patient, right? But I'm opening my mind and the pentacles energy can certainly represent things manifesting into your world, into your material world, Okay, your money, your house, your career, but it also represents your knowledge. And with the king energy, you might be recognizing some life lesson that you've been going through. Okay. And it's like, oh, now I recognize why there was this delay, or I recognize why I need to let go of this thing, or why something hasn't worked out for me. And in the king of pentacles, you gain some wisdom. All right. So you could certainly be gaining a little bit of wisdom. All right. But you may also just be turning over a new leaf in that and you're feeling good. You're feeling confident. For some of you with the king of pentacles, again, if you are looking at making um, any kind of travel plans, okay, um, you maybe you have a different kind of travel plans than you normally would have. But the king of pentacles can have you spending some money in the best of ways. OK, it's like I'm spending some money, but I'm ultimately reaping the rewards of what I'm spending my money on. So you get a benefit back out of it. All right. Now, this could involve another person with that two of um, cups there. Right. So um, it can be that perhaps if you do go on some travel, on some adventure, that maybe you meet interesting people along the way. Um, you're not expecting to. You're releasing all expectations. OK, you might not be expecting to, but you could be doing that. You could be meeting new friends, um, new people that match your vibe. You could be traveling with a friend or someone that you care about um, that as well. Um, you could be even the two of cups can certainly represent love. Uh, you might be meeting you never know if you're single and you're traveling, you're going out with some friends, maybe you meet a new romantic interest while you travel. It might not be what you're expecting or what you even were. It might not even have been on your radar, but it can be a possibility for you there. So uh, let's see what else we get for you. Gratitude list. Okay. 
Um, counting your blessings and feeling gratitude for what you already have helps you be centered in your heart instead of fixated on worries in your mind. What and who are you grateful for right now? Keep focusing upon gratitude and you'll discover the amazing generosity of this universe. Yes, when we express gratitude, when we're thankful for everything that we have, even the things that we've rejected or even the things that haven't gone our way, we get more things to be grateful for. Okay, and uh, so it's a very important energy to embrace. We also have focus on your priorities. Where you put your focus is where you receive your outcome. Yes, your priorities are calling you, which may produce a feeling of anxiety unless you give them time and attention that they and you deserve. Even a small amount of time devoted to your priorities will help you feel better and more confident. I'll leave that there for you guys. I hope there was something here for you. Um, I hope you have a wonderful new moon. And remember, patience, right? The pentacles energy is slow growth. Okay, so some of you have something coming in that you've waited a long time for, or this is you really setting your intentions in a positive way and reminding you to be patient. But remember that you are in control of your energy and your journey forward. Okay, so um, I hope this is a wonderful and magical new moon for you. Um, we're going to move on now to Leo, but I thank you guys for watching. Hello Leo, welcome to your new moon in Pisces reading. This new moon is occurring in your 8th astrological house, so you might be really focused on change. What are you looking to transform in your life? Are you looking to put an end to something so that you can start something new? Uh, are you looking just to improve a situation in your life? The 8th house is ruled by Scorpio and Pluto, okay? So death card energy coming in there for you, all right? So big changes may be on the horizon for you guys. The 8th house also brings a little bit of mystery, okay? So there might be something that may catch you off guard, um, or maybe you are operating under a slight air of secrecy, right? There's a little bit of mystery around you, a little bit of magic around you. So something that people are noticing about you, but they can't quite put their finger on it, and maybe because they're not meant to, okay? You might be just um, uncovering and unearthing some information there as well, all right? But the eighth house also has to do with um, shared assets, okay, the finances, the assets that you share with other people um, can bring something hidden to light, deals with the occult, right, occult just means something hidden, okay, or something secret, um, but it also has to do with inheritances, money coming in, and loans, maybe money going out, okay, so um, all of these things, you might be experiencing some very positive change, okay, or you are changing how you deal with things in your world. We've got a lot of new energy coming up here for you. We've got new moon in Sagittarius and new moon in Capricorn. So the new moon in Sagittarius, right? St focus on the positive. Where do you want to go? Okay, what do you want to create? Where do you find inspiration in your world? Okay, focus on the solutions. Focus on your goals and your dreams. Your goals and your dreams may not always manifest in the easiest of ways. Change may not always be incredibly easy, but it's always beneficial. But it's important to make change positive change in our lives that we do focus on the positive we focus on what we want where do we want to get to what do we want to attract in our lives the path forward always has pitfall pitfalls um always has potholes and always has speed bumps in life and always has those little challenges that we've got to overcome in some way and it's important to focus on them for the moment to kind of understand them figure out who oh, what is this problem that i've been dealt with how am i going to find my way past it but it's important to to focus on finding your way past it, right? So it's not that our our path forward never has any obstacles, but it's how we deal with those things, right? If if a you know if a tree falls in your path on the road, do you just sit there and go, oh crap, there's a tree, um, or do you get out of the car and you go and figure out how do I get around this tree? How do I chop this tree up? How do I can I get over it? Can I get under it? Can I go around it, right? So um, when we focus on the positive or we focus on those solutions, we get to where we want to go a little bit faster. We also have new moon and Capricorn energy step up and lead. Okay. 
Take the lead, take charge of your life. Has someone stolen your thunder in some way? Has someone, um, you know, as there is there something in your world that's making you feel a little bit substandard or a little bit stuck in some way? Um, or that's just not the best for you anymore. You're being very encouraged here, okay, to focus on your goals, dreams, focus on the positive, the path ahead, and to take the lead, to take some sort of action or initiative. Now, first, what do we do? We start with intention, okay, and then we embrace change and transformation, whatever that looks like to you, okay? It could be with your money. It could be with where you live. It could be with, um, you know, how you go about your days, right? How you think about yourself. It could be about your belief systems, right? Whatever that is, there's certainly a lot of positive change ahead for you. Four of Pentacles, Knight of Pentacles, and the Sun. Okay, so this is beautiful energy. Now, considering we've got the Sun coming out and we also have the New Moon and Pisces energy, Okay, and we also have this occurring in your eighth house with Scorpio. There may be something we had in 2022, we had Scorpio um, eclipses. Okay, and eclipse energy is about a six month cycle, right? And we're right in the middle of the last one. So there could certainly be something that you have manifested during those last eclipses in Scorpio that is manifesting itself in your world right now. You're being very encouraged to open up and get ready to receive. You're being very encouraged to prepare for new beginnings that lay ahead for you. Keep on going. Um, stay on track. But there's a little bit of a word of caution that is coming in here for you because we do have the Four of Pentacles making an appearance. So the Four of Pentacles is not a bad card, okay, by any stretch of the imagination. It can certainly represent stability and security, a focus on your home, your family, your career, right? The things that bring you stability in your world. It also is um, a, a reminder of the foundations that you've built in your life, your belief systems, your values, okay, your personal values, the things that you value in your world here as well. The four of pentacles can represent a certain element of success and then trusting that there's more abundance to be had um, in whatever, whatever abundance means to you. But the four of pentacles can sometimes represent a miserly energy, right? And if you see the dude here, okay, we've got a person here, okay? And then we've got the dude here desperately clinging on to what he has stored away, okay? And so when we do get this, there may be something here where... You know, there may be a belief system around your money. There may be something here where you're holding on to your money too tight. Remember, money is energy. And we do need to circulate that energy so that it flows back to us in some way. So, you know, it can be that you've been very much in penny pinching mode for the last little while. But Spirit is encouraging you to open up a little bit because there's new sources of income. There's new sources of prosperity and abundance that lie ahead for you. Okay, um, we do have the Knight of Pentacles coming towards this Four of Pentacles. So it could be um, inheritances coming your way, right? Okay, there could be uh, if you've been saving your money, the Four of Pentacles, you could be saving your money for a while. And the Knight of Pentacles can represent someone coming in. And let's say you've been saving up to buy a house. The Knight of Pentacles can be someone presenting you with an offer maybe to buy your house so you can go somewhere better or if you're buying your first house this could be a banker coming in and saying yes here you go i grant you your loan and that can certainly come in here with um with your eighth house energy okay but there's certainly some opportunity for improvement on your home your finances um Perhaps your ability here to blend finances with another person because this is your joint assets as well, your joint finances. So, you know, perhaps two paychecks are better than one, okay? Or perhaps you or your person gets a raise or something and now we need to remember to make sure that we balance out our responsibilities in regards to money. But the Knight of Pentacles, something coming in, something that will allow you to kind of release the purse strings a little bit or something that will allow you to put some money in the bank but also remember to have a little bit of fun with it as well so if you do, if you are receiving some sort of um financial increase of some kind whether it's an inheritance or whether it's something that you deserve that you've worked for 
Um, this is a reminder here to, yes, put some money away for the future for a rainy day, squirrel it away. But remember that you can't take it with you, right? So remember to have a little bit of fun with your um, extra income there as well. Okay, um, you know, um, find a healthy balance between having fun with some money and putting it away for that rainy day and making those investments, all right? Um, so there could certainly be something coming in. The Knight of Pentacles can represent an important person that can come in to help you with your finances as well. How do I, because the four of pentacles quite often is I've got a certain level of abundance. How do I get more? So you might be seeking out um, some sort of resource um, person, or maybe you're doing some research to figure out how can I make my money work for me instead of me working so hard for my money. But whatever you've got going on, we do have the sun coming out. Now the sun really does bring about uh, a lot of creative energy, a lot of inspirational energy. It also brings about the positive. Focus on the positive. It gives you the energy that you need to make positive change, Okay, or to move forward with a project or an idea and to find the solutions. This brings clarity, a sense of focus, and also brings a really positive vibe. Okay, so the sun, allow the sun to really shine. Okay, um, follow your goals and dreams and believe in yourself. The sun can be a really wonderful outcome on something here as well. Something here that brings you happiness and joy may be really coming in for you. Again, we've got a culmination of some previous uh, eclipse energy coming in for some of you here, but this is also reminding you here to stay positive, focus on the abundance that you want to attract into your life. Remember, some things take some time to grow, okay? The sun, without the sun, nothing can grow. So we've got the sun coming in here, bringing you some growth, expansion, and really some positive vibes in your situation so again focus on the positive focus on the things you want to create and it's amazing what the magic will happen when you do that okay so let's grab a couple of angels of abundance here and see what they have to say for you the one oh thank you very much and two and we have unlimited ideas beautiful just like the sun right expansive energy your mind is one with God's spirit, the universe's infinite mind. Therefore, you have complete access to unlimited ideas guaranteed to bring blessings. All you need to do is take divinely guided action to allow these ideas to come to fruition. Okay, so there is this little reminder there with that four of pentacles. Okay, we do want to open up with our energy. Okay, we don't want to keep closed off, right? We're sometimes in protection mode with that four of pentacles. So be open Okay, be open, be free, okay, that sun energy, right? These people dancing in the sunlight, right? Being free, being happy, all right? And, you know, being welcoming and warm. So um, remember there to uh, open up just a little bit, okay? We also have Razor Promotion. Yes, baby, check that out. Mr. Knight of Pentacles coming in to, uh, you know, to uh, bring you some good news. Congratulations, an increase in your abundance flow awaits you. This is a result of your positive focus and willingness to take action. Wow, based on your divine guidance. Keep up the good work. A result of positive focus. Focus on the positive and uh, take action your willingness to take action, step up and lead. Need we say more? Razor promotion. It's all because of the things that you have done and the attitude that you put out there. I'm going to leave that there for you guys, okay? Um, I hope there was something here that resonated with you. Keep your dream alive. Remember, stay positive. Take a step up. Lead. Take some action and you will be rewarded, okay, for the actions that you take. So thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you have a fantastic new moon. I'll see you guys next time. Hello Virgo, welcome in. This is your new moon in Pisces reading. So this new moon here, Virgo, lands in your seventh astrological house. Now this is ruled by Venus and Libra, so we do have a very beautiful Venus aspect um, coming in here for you guys. So you may be feeling 
um, a little bit more kind and compassionate. You might be looking for additional love and friendship. The seventh house has to do with your relationships, um, all kinds of relationships. This also has to do with your contracts, right? So the commitments, the obligations that you make with other people, partnerships of all kinds here does have to do with romantic and business partnerships. So you might be reaching out, you might be spreading your wings and making some changes in your world, okay? You might be entering a higher level of commitment with some people or companies, etc., in your life at this time, okay? But this also, because it is ruled by Libra, okay? Yes, it has contracts um, that may be highlighted. Some of you might be making some purchases. You might be signing lease documents. Um, you could be, of course, doing things like getting married, that kind of thing, okay? But Libra energy really is about balance, okay? About letting go of things that really aren't working, um, the things that are working against you, right? Because the seventh house can also bring about enemies, right? But enemies can be, um, you know, people who aren't on the same page as you. Um, this can be environments that are just really not the best for you, okay? But this can also be just circumstances that may not be necessarily working in your favor. So you might be looking to make some really positive change in your world. So because this um, new moon energy does have an influence of endings and new beginnings, okay, we quite often do need to put the finishing touches on something before we start something new. Whatever your situation is, we've got Leo energy here bringing in the shine. Okay, this is your time to shine here, Virgo. It's your time to step out of your comfort zone to make something happen. Moving and shaking is for you. Okay, this energy really does bring in a whole bunch of passion and excitement. Um, a lot of creative energy here, but really you stepping into the spot spotlight in some way. Now this could just be the spotlight is on you because you are focused on the things that are really positive for yourself, the things that, you know, really do make you feel like you're in alignment with your goals and your dreams. This could be, um, you know, especially as far as, you know, other people and contracts and relationships of all kinds go, this could be a perfect time for you um, to really make some positive change to uh, go for that promotion or go for that raise, ask for what you want or make some other big changes in your life, okay? Um, you know, that higher level of commitment relationships, right? Maybe you're getting married at this time or setting a wedding date. Um, of course, if you are single and out in um, out and about, okay, this could just be this energy here where all eyes are on you. So there is a certain amount of excitement, um, a sense of I can, I can, I can energy coming in here for you. And of course, this is a time of growth and abundance entering in your life in all kinds of wonderful ways. So it's beautiful. Beautiful, beautiful energy there. So we have, let's see, excellent, okay. We've got the High Priestess coming in, we've got the Six of Cups, and we also have the Ten of Wands, thank you, and we've got the King of Wands on top of that, beautiful. I was just gonna say that I'm gonna get a clarifier for the Ten of Wands because it can represent stress and burdens and too, taking on too much responsibility, but it can also represent that there's positive responsibility and a leveling up that you're about to take. And so we've got a clarifier with the King of Wands, so it's actually really Really quite beautiful for you. All right, this is a time to really uh, trust yourself. Trust your judgment, trust your intuition. When we get the high priestess energy, there could be um, a really big connection here that you have. You're attracting uh, things in that you want, that you desire, that match your vibe, right? The high priestess very connected with the moon cycles. And so this could certainly be that whatever you've been manifesting with the moon or, you know, even just the moon energy in general, it's really working in your favor. It's helping you open up to be in receiving mode, to see the potential, to see possibilities that are opening up for you. Okay. It's um, also you really gaining an understanding understanding uh, a deep knowledge about what you've been through or about what you want right this could be the knowledge of self as the high priestess is really the keeper of secrets mysteries and a lot of wisdom okay so <clears throat> and also of course very spiritual and very in a very um intuitive energy so i think here that you are really really trusting yourself and you're trusting your instincts to make some decisions or, um, you know, to kind of have a deep knowing when 
the time is right. And we, we kind of all do feel that. We quite often ignore it um, because sometimes intuitively we feel the time is right, but then our brain starts taking over and talking us out of something. So it's really important here to really trust your intuition, um, especially in this energy, okay? Um, and be present and be focused. We do have the Six of Cups coming in here. If any of you are from the UK, this particular Six of Cups card always reminds me of um, Punch and Judy. Um, there was... Um, I don't know if they still have it around, but when I was a child in England, um, we quite often, um, you know, after Sunday church service, right, they usually had like a, a little garden gathering and things like that, and usually things for the kids to do and all that kind of stuff. And someone would bring out the Punch and Judy show. It's like a puppet show, right? So, um, but the Six of Cups is a little bit of nostalgia. There you go. A little bit of nostalgia, but it's also about having fun. It really speaks to your inner child. Okay, so, you know, I think for some of you here, there's really a need here to really embrace a little bit of balance in your life, hence that Libra and energy. Um, also that Venus energy, right? What makes you feel good? What makes you smile? What makes you happy? What brings this sense of childlike wonder and joy into your life? So, you know, it is a reminder to find a little bit of balance. Even if you've got some big goals that you're about to achieve, achieve we've got the Ten of Wands and the King of Wands, right? So, but it is still important to have that balance in your world and to have some fun, okay? Okay. The Six of Cups also does um, really represent being focused in the here and now. Okay, It is kind of an in-between card. It does carry a little bit of nostalgia, but it also brings a little bit of forward thinking. So this is where we live in the present moment. We are open. We're receptive. We're um, in the here and the now, but we are looking in the past a little bit, just a little bit of reflective energy, just to maybe do a little bit of a gut check, see how far have I come, what has worked out for me, what hasn't worked out for me, um, am I still on the right track, and you're making plans for the future, but everything you do in the here and the now, the energy that you embrace today influences your future. The past is already done and gone, okay, and we can't necessarily hold on to things, and we can't beat ourselves up for things that haven't gone our way. All we can do is do something a little bit better today that influences our tomorrow in a more positive direction. So it's always a good reminder there with the six of cups but you may also some of you because the moon energies do bring about surprises sometimes and the six of cups can be a return card it can be something coming back into your life it could be a second chance at a relationship it could be a second chance at a job opportunity right those contracts that we talked about um this could be you know maybe there was something that you wanted to purchase um a little while ago and it just didn't quite work out and and sometimes we just feel like we hit a brick wall. Well, you may have those doors opening up again for you, but maybe a little bit better and the circumstances might be a little bit better for that situation. So there could be a return of something, a friend, an opportunity uh, into your life here with this. And, you know, you might need to make a decision and the high priestess really shows that you have all of the wisdom that you need internally okay, to make the right choices and the right decision for you. But ultimately, we do also have the Ten of Pentacles with the King of Wands. So the Ten of Pentacles always does highlight the need for some very big boundaries, okay? Because quite often, you know, you're in your quest to live your best life and to be kind and compassionate and maybe to help other people. We quite often do take on a lot more responsibility than we have a right to. We carry other people's energy, other people's burdens, other people's responsibilities. And quite often it's just out of, you know, the goodness of our heart, just wanting to help out, but it does have an impact on you, right? So, you know, that you are being very invited here to really have a look at the areas of your life that are causing you stress and burdens and what can you do to relieve that? Where do you need to put up some boundaries? How do you infuse a little bit more fun into your life with the Six of Cups, right? Um, how do you tap into your inner child? Because we do all need to do that. But the Ten of Wands can also represent the end of a journey and you are taking on some responsibilities. And with the King of Wands here, okay, King of Wands can be um, 
an energy of power, of strength, of following your goals and dreams, and you successfully achieved what you set out to achieve, okay? Or you are um, really have a goal in mind and your goal here is to level up. And of course, we do have business partnerships that come in here with this new moon for you guys. So with the King of Wands and the Ten of Wands, this could be you. You are ready to take on a lot more responsibility and you are ready for, you know, a position of leadership or a supervisory position, or you're ready to be your own boss, right? You're ready to boss up, level up um, in some way. This could be your career, your career path for sure. This could also be relationships possibly in your life as well. You've got to get over this little 10 of wands hurdle, okay, um, to really commit fully um, into your future with, you know, whoever you're partnered up with. But the King of Wands can be that entrepreneurial energy as well. So I think some of you, you're really, really, really feeling good. You're feeling confident. You're feeling strong and capable of following your goals and dreams and believing in yourself that you can achieve um, the success that you are looking for. Those kings are always successful. Always know how to, um, you know, how to resolve situations or um, deal with the struggles and the burdens in life. So you could really be powering through something here and finding a good resolution to an issue that maybe you've had going on for a while or you're just figuring out a better way to do things, all right? So let's leave that there. Let's see what the last messages are for you with the angels of abundance. And we've got moonlighting. There's your entrepreneurial energy coming out right there. You can start working on your dream career part time while keeping your other job to pay the bills. Soon your dream career will take flight and fully support you. Beautiful. King of Wands entrepreneurial energy, more responsibility, right? A lot of, you know, a little bit of stress and burdens, right? But something may really pay off for you, okay? So if you've got something that you're doing on the side or that you want to do on the side, you might just get this big boom coming in. We have savings coming in here for you as well. Are you can as you consistently save for your future, your future is saved. You do your future self a big favor as you consistently set aside present funds. This is part of your self-care and path to feeling secure as you focus on your life purpose. Interesting, because that really does speak to that six of cups, right? What you do today, what decisions you make today influences your tomorrow, right? And has an impact on your tomorrow. So it's important to do something in the here and the now. I'll leave that there for you guys. I hope there was something here for you. I hope you have a fantastic new moon. Manifest away, manifest, manifest, manifest your dreams into reality. All right, so we're going to move on now to Libra. Hello, Libra. Welcome to your new moon in Pisces reading. This is occurring in your sixth astrological house, and this is ruled by Virgo and Mercury. So your sixth house, you might be really focused on your health and well-being at this time. Now, health and well-being can represent physical, spiritual, emotional health, okay, all kinds of health, health of your environment, um, uh, you know, maybe cleaning up some clutter, okay? You might be looking to make some more positive choices in your lifestyle, like better eating choices, that kind of thing. Perhaps you're going to look at starting or or kicking up a notch your uh, exercise regime, shall we say, okay? So all kinds of focus on your health, but it also focus not just on your health, but also of healing, of feeling better, all right, so the, you really use this energy to think about what habits, behaviors, patterns are not working for you anymore, and what do you need to change to make yourself just feel a little bit better. Um, and this can just be tiny little things, right? And quite often we want the big results right away, but don't forget this new moon really does bring in the energy of incremental successes because it does come back the energy comes back around multiple times throughout the year so it's like little milestones that we hit and quite often you know if you're looking to say lose 50 pounds or something like that right um you know that can feel really daunting right especially when you figure you know you probably only lose a couple pounds a week even if you try really hard 
And so sometimes we look at that 50 number and we're like, good Lord, that's like, it seems like a mile away. But what if you split it up into those increments that we're going to see throughout the year, like we said at the beginning of the reading. So maybe you divide it by four, divide it by three, and all of a sudden things become a little bit easier. Um, the goal feels like it's more attainable, more achievable, and you're less likely to give up. So that can really um, help us that kind of um, the way we look at things in that way. It can kind of help us in a lot of areas of our life, right? Divide to conquer. Okay. Um, so anyway, so you might be looking at all of those kind of things, but the sixth house also has to do with your daily routines, the habits that we do daily. Maybe you're looking to change things up a little bit there. Okay. It also has to do with um, helping other people. Right? So maybe you're looking for ways that you can give back. We have new moon and Aries energy coming in, really, really, really influencing you to go for it. Time is now, 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 now. Okay, if you've been putting something off, you've been wanting to do something, um, you know you need to do something, okay, whatever it happens to, it, to be, whether it's your sixth house energy or just anything in your life, this is really encouraging you. This new moon is encouraging you to go for the gold. Okay, just take one step, one step a day gives you one step closer to your dreams, to your goals. So set your intentions, whatever those look like for you, and then boom, off to the races you go. Just one little foot in front of the other and you will achieve what you set out to achieve, okay? So really embrace your goals and dreams and get the ball rolling, okay? Now this may require you detaching from something, letting something go, because again, remember, this new moon really does bring about the energy of endings and new beginnings okay and in order to start something new or make improvements sometimes we do need to cut something off okay so you might need to kind of just know draw that little line in the sand and it's like nope ye shall not pass okay we're gonna do something different this time around okay so go for it okay embrace that Aries energy and we are um, right on the cusp of Aries season right Aries is uh, Aries season comes in um, uh, 24th First, I believe of March okay so you know now is a good time to really prepare and to take those steps or just start to put a plan in place even okay and then we take action but we've got the two of swords coming in here for you so the two of swords can represent a balanced energy if you're not feeling balanced in your world right now this is a great energy and a great moon to do that okay to find a little bit of balance in your world but the two of swords often and also does represent that you have a decision to make but there's a little bit of back and forth in some way because it can represent that I am really going within I'm trusting my intuition I'm listening to myself I'm not letting anyone influence me and I'm making the right choices for myself but quite often the two of swords does represent an element of you know, do I go left? Do I go right? Like it's a little bit of indecision. And sometimes when we see things in black and white, um, things don't always feel right. So we got to look in the middle, right? And sometimes that's the way to really make the best choices for us, right? Where can I find the middle ground? Okay. Or what is the alternate approach, right? If, you know, if A, if option A doesn't feel right and option B doesn't feel quite right either, is there something hidden? Is there an alternate way? forward okay and so sometimes I do think about the two of swords as being you know not just having a couple of options or not just everything being black and white quite often we operate in the world of gray right and so can we find that common ground or is there a different path that we haven't quite seen yet so your intuition will quite often show you the way and this can be a little bit of a blocked off energy, especially, um, you know, sometimes because we do have a five of cups coming out here as well. And, you know, there can be this energy of, you know, how should we say? Because the two of swords can be closed off, the five of swords brings in some sadness and disappointment. If you actually look at how this card is, this is the deviant moon, so it's a little bit weird. Um, but we've got, you know, five cups here. We've got three spilled over, two here. This person here is like yelling and pointing at this person, and this person has their their hands over their ears. Like, I don't want to hear what you have to say. And the two of swords is quite often, right? We've got two swords crossed across our chest. 
And so it can be here that you want to shut out any kind of negativity in your world. And, you know, quite often people mean well. Um, you know, if we say, I'm, I'm going to go out and I'm going to lose weight or I'm going to train to run a marathon or, you know, whatever it happens to be for you. And then inevitably, okay, even though people do mean well, typically, um, inevitably though, someone comes and throws a damper on your fire. Okay. And, you know, just like this, like, you'll never do that. You can't do that. You're crazy. Um, you know, wow, that's really difficult, you know? And so sometimes in this two of swords energy, we do go within and we don't necessarily talk about what we want to do because we really do internalize and we're shutting out um, external influences, right? And, you know, because we don't want to hear someone's negativity. And when someone, you know, when someone, you know, shows their negativity or says, you're crazy, you can't do this, this is impossible, blah, 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 blah. What they're really doing is showing you their limitations. And that has nothing to do with yours. And, but sometimes we just don't want to hear it. Okay. So you might be kind of shutting some people out right about now in this energy, just so that you can make sure that you're making the right choices for yourself, because there's something here you're trying to turn around with the five of cups. Something has you feeling a little bit down in the dumps or feeling a little bit you know, sad or a little, maybe even inadequate, right, in this energy. But there's a potential here to turn things around. There's a potential here to improve your situation, to make the right choices, to heal um, something in your world. The Five of Cups always needs um, healing in some way, okay? And, you know, so it can be here that, you know, in order for you to make the best choices for yourself and to do something that is right for you, you may um, really just need to rely on yourself and go internal okay with that energy you know or at least put up some boundaries if someone's kind of you know throwing a damper on your fire okay and on your passion all right I think some of you here may actually have something to do with a relationship because we do have healing coming in here for you okay and um, relationships don't necessarily have to be romantic they can be business partnerships um, can be friendships okay any of those connections in our life something here is kind of a little bit topsy-turvy okay and you know so you have the potential to um, turn things around with the five of cups but you know you have a decision to make is this relationship is this person is this environment is this job okay is this lifestyle working for you can you turn it around and fix it the way it is right now or do you need to um you know do you need to walk away and find something a little bit better so i think here that you're really thinking about things and you're really contemplating things in your world with the seven of pentacles here also okay you're not making rash decisions here whatsoever in this energy okay and i think that for some of you you've been really thinking about something for a while okay and um, it's you know it's important to think about things to put together a plan a strategy the seven of Pentacles really does have you assessing your situation um, it can be a time of harvest okay you reap what you sow so this can be a time for you where you are um, going to get rewarded for some things that you focus on that you can um, really turn around for yourself for others of you you're figuring out a strategy a plan you're like what's my best way forward okay am I good in my situation can I heal my situation where I am right now can I do something a little bit better or am I ready to make a big change because the seven of pentacles we could be at the situation where you've got some goal or dream in mind you're at the seven of pentacles right now but maybe you're shooting for that ten can you get it on the trajectory that you're on right now or do you need to do something just a little bit different or even something drastically different? So it's important to go within just like that two of swords there to make the choices that are right for you on your path to wherever you want to get to. Okay, patience is also um, the key to success sometimes too. Okay, especially in this healing energy, you need to heal something. Okay, you need to focus on your well-being here in this energy. Okay, and the seven of pentacles reminds you that change, growth, success, etc. Um, we do need to embrace a little bit of patience on our journey, okay, because not everything happens overnight and sometimes we get frustrated when things don't. So again, 
take things in small increments and you will actually be able to celebrate more successes. And when you celebrate more success, you attract more success. Okay, so um, remember to not bite off too much right at one time and that may really help you on your journey. And so we have take a divinely guided chance coming here for you from the angels of abundance. All positive change and successful ventures involve a degree of risk, and you are ready to follow your divine guidance to new territories. As you leave behind that which is comfortable and familiar but no longer appropriate for you, you make room for new and more meaningful opportunities. There you go. All right, and let's see your final message here. Successful funding beautiful. Okay. Remember the seven of pentacles can be a successful harvest, right? Your idea is divinely guided and supported by the same infinite wisdom of God, spirit, the universe that gave you the idea. Do not allow money concerns to prevent you from turning it into reality. Crowdfunding partnerships and other investments are available to help you. What different approaches can you take, right? When we look at the seven of pentacles, we can quite often look for an alternate way, an alternate approach at things. And we can also look at our resources that are available for us as well. So keep an open mind there. Okay, make the right choices for you. Be patient on your journey. You will get to where you want to get to. But remember, go for it. We'll leave that there for you folks. Uh, ho happy new moon, okay? And we'll see you guys in a bit. Hello, Scorpio. Welcome to your new moon in Pisces reading. This is occurring in your fifth astrological house. This is nice for you guys, okay? Um, the fifth house is ruled by Leo and the sun. And the fifth house really does bring about your sense of embracing things that give you pleasure and joy. This is where we create things, maybe do something a little bit exciting. Um, you could be feeling extra creative right now. Maybe you're feeling like redecorating your house, decluttering your environment. Um, you know, maybe even building something, right? Something, uh, you know, just get your creative juices out there a little bit, okay? But also having fun while you do it, okay? Really enjoying yourself while you're on your journey. Um, the fifth house really does have to do with, you know, your ability to express yourself, your thoughts, your feelings, your desires. This does bring about some romance and love affairs into your world as well, okay? Um, you know, so you might be meeting new people or you might be, you know, really kind of focusing back on the relationships um, in your world. It doesn't have to be romance. It can be your friendships as well, okay? Um, the love that's in the air, right, for the people that surround you, okay? You might even be getting out of your comfort zone and meeting new people at this time, trying new things, um, maybe, you know, picking something up that catches your interest, okay? So you got a really kind of um, joyous and very vibrant energy that's coming in here for you in this moon. We have the new moon and Libra energy coming here for you. Know you are loved. Okay. So this new moon is saying to you, okay, that number one, you may have fallen out of alignment or you may have not been spending time with the people in your life that you care about. And sometimes we just get distracted. We have money things going on. We've got other career ambitions. We've got maybe if you've got children, you've got, um, you know, you focus on them and not necessarily the relationships in your life, right? We do have that. It's, you know, perfectly normal. So, you know, if you're feeling maybe a little bit alone or disconnected, okay, this um, new moon, it's bringing in this sense of love and romance and connection for you, okay, in this energy. And of course, with this, um, you know, with that being a Libra and influence there, it's really um, perhaps giving you... Um, opening up some opportunities to find a little bit of a better balance in your life as well, right? With, you know, your work life, your home life, your time that you want to do things that are fun for you um, and your partnerships in your world, right? We can some, we sometimes do need to focus and bring ourselves a little bit, um, a little bit more balance and harmony in our world, right? Things just sometimes go by the wayside, right? Um, I think here that if you are feeling a little bit disconnected, if you're feeling a little bit lonely, a lot of people are, 
Um, it's not uh, it's not a surprising energy. Um, a lot of people are been for a very rough few, uh, couple of years, okay? And so this could really be a time when doors are opening up for you to meet new people. And this could certainly be because we've got this fun and creative energy coming here with your fifth house. This could be, you know, you, um, you know, let's say you want to take a class. Maybe you want to learn how to make pottery or you know maybe you've always wanted to do some painting but you just don't know how to get started you know you might take some sort of class it might be online maybe it's in person and you just might be feel it might be able to feel a little bit more connected and you just might meet some new people that you can really vibe with in your life okay so there is love in the air that's coming in here and love and kindness and compassion of all kinds and look at that. We've got the Empress that came out for you. We've got the Seven of Swords and we've got the Knight of Swords. So you're really being encouraged here to take action. Okay. Just don't worry about things. Okay. Trust yourself um, on your journey. Open yourself up to trusting people. Have some conversations. Open up communication. But take action on you know, getting things back on track in your life or even starting something new. The Empress, right, was ruled by Venus. The Empress card does represent um, a time of harvest and abundance in your life. Your ability to track the right people, the right situations, the right things towards you. Okay, the Empress card can be the birth of new ideas. It's also where we get our creativity it's coming in here for you too. So it's time to create the life that you want, okay? It also has to do with love connections in your world there as well being open and receptive to new things new ideas okay and it really is ruling you in this um in this new moon energy so it's beautiful love and abundance and creative juices all flowing okay and your ability to connect or reconnect or even heal situations here as well because when our heart is open then we allow all this beautiful love to flow around us okay in the most positive ways so it's an awesome energy for you to get we do have the seven of swords and the knight of swords here okay and the seven of swords can sometimes be um a lack of trust and this doesn't necessarily have to do with other people because the you know the swords communication our thought processes sometimes we don't trust ourselves sometimes we doubt our own decision making skills and sometimes we you know with the seven of swords it's like we make a decision and then we go back and forth right we go back to the scene of the crime so to speak right so you know it's like i make a decision but then i kind of go back a little bit and go hmm is that really what i want so sometimes we do get this back and forth and it's because you're not trusting the decisions that you make or you're not clear on something here so the need to get clarity on uh, something and trust yourself to make the right choices or to speak your truth is really important we do have the knight of swords here as well and the knight of swords is also very action oriented right it's like first make a decision okay um, or if there's something that you need to clear the air about right and talk about it do it make that decision go for it take some sort of action or initiative okay the knight of swords is a very quick thinking kind of energy um I'll, quite often um, a messenger here as well okay um so you could possibly um be getting some news at this moon okay or you are making an important decision and you're going to act upon that decision okay if there's something here with a person in your world okay that you might need to clear the air about Okay, maybe there's been a misunderstanding. Um, maybe there's just that kind of feeling of disconnection there. The Knight of Swords really shows that when you do take initiative and you do talk about things, you get things out in the open. You'll get the clarity um, that you're looking for. And we can quite often clear the air or at least get the information that you need to make the decision on your next steps. All right, but there might be something here. It's very interesting how this Knight of Swords has come out because he is facing this Seven of Swords, okay? And the Seven of Swords, again, we can quite often, you know, try and stay positive or we can, you know, figure out what we want, but then we kind of go back a little bit and this guy is going back. So it's like there's something here that you may need to, there might be something that you've missed or there might be something that you need additional clarity on. And once you figure that out, then boom, now you are moving forward. Okay, but remember, we do have this Empress energy here for you that's really ruling the day for you. Okay, and so really bringing in a lot of beautiful high vibe um, energy. 
So be open to communication. Be open to trying something new. Okay, open your heart. Trust yourself on your journey, right? And sometimes we do doubt our own um, skills, abilities, or even thought processes, right? And, you know, sometimes that might come with a lack of confidence, okay? Or maybe we feel as though we screwed something up at some point um, in our lives, right? And the Knight of Swords is coming in here to give you a little bit of confidence boost as well, okay? And help you free yourself from, you know, um, you know, from those kind of almost like self-sabotaging kind of things. All right, let's see what your angels of abundance have for you. And we've got declutter. You'll feel better and more focused if you'll take the time to clear away clutter from your living and workspace. Interesting, since we've got that creative energy and you might, you know, some of you might be looking at redecorating your house, moving your furniture, etc. Anywho, um, donate what you can to help others who may need your items. Be sure to keep your schedule uncluttered as well. So you're really being invited here to keep things simple. Okay, and decluttering can be really, um, really helpful in your life. You can feel as though you got more breathing room and the energy flows a little bit better. So, um, but declutter can mean a whole bunch of things. It can also be, um, you know, let go of your doubts, right? Just, you know, clear your mind and, you know, that way you can move forward in that energy. And we also have exercise to increase your energy and manifestation abilities. Okay, when we exercise, we really do trigger um, physical activity really does trigger some very wonderful uh, energies in our minds, right? It triggers our adrenaline, our serotonin, okay, and our pleasure center in our brain and it gets our energy flowing, right? Um, so it's a great thing. The key to manifesting quickly is to have very high energy levels and the easiest way to increase them is through physical exercise. Choose a fun and meaningful activity so that you'll look forward to exercising and it becomes its own reward. Now you can maybe go for a walk in nature. That's a great way. You can ride your bicycle. Um, maybe go uh, something really fun. I don't know. Um, is um, you know like a dance class, like Zumba or something like that. Whatever floats your boat. Whatever uh, will feel you will get you feeling kind of in that high vibe energy. So I'm going to leave that there for you guys, okay, because the Empress card, and then this is your key to increasing your manifestation abilities, okay, is to get your body moving, okay, so you are attracting some wonderful things into your world right now, okay, make some decisions here, manifest with this new moon, and trust in the process, all right? I'm going to leave that there for you folks. I hope you have a fantastic new moon, and we are going to move on now to Sag. Hello Sagittarius, welcome to your new moon in Pisces reading. This is occurring in your fourth astrological house. This is ruled by Cancer and the Moon. So there may be something that you are keeping private, something that you're being a little bit secretive about. Um, and the fourth house really does have to do with your home, your family, um, your parents, okay, your ancestry, your sense of security, uh, your foundations that you've built. So, you know, it may be that you're looking to make some changes in where you live. Um, there might be at this, at this moment, there might actually be some maybe family secrets that come to light. Something that's been hidden may come to light for you. Okay. But I think here that you're just kind of maybe, um, keeping be keeping quiet on something um in this energy so if you are um for example if you are looking to say buy a house or something or move your place of residence you might not necessarily be shouting from the rooftops at this time maybe you're doing something a little bit quiet there might be an environment like if you're buying a house maybe it's a really competitive market or something and you're just keep you know just kind of you know, not letting people know what you're up to. Okay. You might put in secret bids as well, right? Something that's not necessarily wide open. You might just be feeling a little bit private at this time as well. Maybe you're just feeling like you want to spend a little bit more time at home with your family. Okay. Um, you might even be looking here at, you know, again, a moving, moving is like a really big thing right about now. Okay. Um, if you, you know, maybe you're looking to move to a bet a bigger house, a smaller house, maybe a better neighborhood, um, something in there, okay? Um, and you know, just something where you can feel a little bit more 
comfortable, shall we say. Okay, and that doesn't necessarily mean staying in your comfort zone, but we want to go, we want to be able to go home and have a sanctuary. All right, so there might be something there, but again, you might just be right now looking at maybe sprucing up your home environment there spending some more time um, with your family there might be something new going on with children maybe you're looking at expanding your family Ooh, with this energy um, perhaps somebody is keeping a pregnancy secret um, and you're not quite ready to announce this to people at this time so you're just keeping something under wraps for the moment okay even though it's very exciting and sometimes we do that right but I think I'm getting a very interesting energy here where some of you may actually be um, kind of looking at your family tree. You're looking at your ancestry. So maybe you are, um, you know, kind of really digging um, into, you know, all the branches of that family tree. And you just never know what you might discover when you do that. Um, my dad was doing that uh, a number of years ago. I'm like, dude, be careful. You just never know what you're gonna, what skeletons you're gonna unearth. Um, I think he traced it back to like 1500s in Wales or something like that I don't know anyways he traced it back a long way so it could be a fun activity it's also very tedious so if you're doing that kudos to you because that takes a lot of patience but you just might uncover some very interesting things anyway we have new moon and Libra energy coming in here no you are loved now the Libra energy does bring in an energy of balance and harmony but the Libra energy also rules the justice card and this has to do with contrast and so you may be really um, entering into some sort of negotiations um, right about this time and I do feel that it has to do with your home it may have to do with your career okay and that can really influence you know I mean hey um, you know good news in your career environment can really help you in your home environment right so they do they are connected quite often okay so but there could be something there that you're doing with contracts but the Libra energy does bring about the need for some balance and harmony in your world so you know again maybe you're just feeling right about this time like you want to spend some more time with your home with your family with your parents with your children okay and you're maybe seeing what that looks like for you but this energy wants you to know that you are loved so again maybe you're focused on the things that you love the environment that makes you feel safe and secure um but also the people that you love in your life you may also at this time be open to meeting new people or of course expanding your family now we've got the Knight of Swords, the King of Pentacles, Justice card, look at that. Hey, there you go. Okay, I love it when the cards do that. That's awesome. All right, we do have the Knight of Swords. So you might have, I mean, geez, look at this. The Knight of Swords with the King of Pentacles, some shrewd negotiating energy. And with that Justice card, contracts, negotiations, purchases, loans, you name it. Okay, so you could really have something exciting that's going on here for you. Okay, you could be uh, buying a car, buying a house, lease agreements, job negotiations, you name it, something that involves a contract, something that involves you signing your name on a dotted line somewhere. Okay, so again, this might be some, you know, secret negotiations, something going on there for you. But this Libra and energy right here is that uh, Libra and energy, Libra and energy, right? This balance and harmony in your world and your ability to really um, be honest and open and truthful and make the right choices for you balanced fair decisions right so the knight of swords or something exciting okay the knight of swords is really bringing in a sense of action maybe delivering some messages some news okay and also is about all forms of communication so having the uh having discussions okay um you know talking about money maybe you're trying to find um you know some investments you may have something that comes to fruition there could be something that comes from your parents here that is really quite exciting the knight of swords is um, a very fast moving energy so there might be something here that you stumble across that you might need to make some swift moves on right you might need to take some swift action okay but but you're not making 
a rash decision, especially when we've got the King of Pentacles here to put a damper on the situation and to slow things down. Okay, and the Justice card that also kind of like, whoa, Nelly, let's make sure we're making the right choices. So the Knight of Swords usually does bring in this very excited energy. Okay, and this, yes, we've got to act upon this right now, right? Look what I found. I've got this news, right? And, um, you know, but then the King of Pentacles energy kind of slows it down and says, okay, let's have a look at this practical and in a practical way before we jump right into anything without knowing all of the details. So the King of Pentacles, again, this can certainly be taking charge of your money, your finances. There may be a parent or something that um, can help you along your way. The King of Pentacles can be, uh, you know, a biz something to do with business that you're maybe, nego there's a big negotiation kind of energy coming in here um, or discussions about money, about resources, um, you know, about your home, that kind of thing. This can represent money coming in or money going out. Okay, but money going out that benefits you, all right, in some way. So again, you might be looking at how you're spending your money or how to um, restore some balance in your finances, okay, especially in the family unit right? Balancing your household budget kind of thing. Um, but they're all in the upright. So they're all good. So whatever choices, decisions that you're making right now, they're all good for you. All right. And it's because you're taking a little bit of time. Put it this way. If someone was just swoop in today and say, I've got this opportunity of a lifetime for you. We've got to act. We've got to act now. Somebody here is going to come in here as this practical force that goes, whoa, 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 whoa. Hold on a second. What does this entail? Um, what are the terms? What does the contract look like? What is the return on investment? How much is this going to cost me? You know, all of those practical down to earth questions that would just be like the King of Pentacles to ask, right? And, you know, the thing is, is we do quite often get these kind of exciting things that do come up in our world, but anything that is worth having is also quite often worth sleeping on. So if somebody does come into your world and they say, I have an opportunity for a lifetime for you and this is what it is, but you got to act now. Time is of the essence, right? And you're like, no, well, I need to sleep on it. No, 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 no. The deadline is today. Hmm. Probably let that go. Okay. Do your homework, but probably let that go because any legitimate opportunity, you will be able to sleep on it and ask questions and do some homework. So just a little bit of a reminder there. The justice card does bring in that reminder for us as well, that there might be something there that you need to commit to that you need to sign your name on the dotted line for. Okay. And to make sure that you read the fine print and do your homework. Okay. And that's where that king of pentacles is like putting on the brakes a little bit, but for a good reason, right? Just to make sure you've got all the information and everything that you need. But I do feel that some of you are having some really good news and that there's some doors opening up for you. So it could be new job, new house, um, you know, all of this stuff flowing into your life and um, in the best of ways, because the justice card does bring forth some really good karma for you. All right. And brings your ability to make a good decision. Okay. So I think something here is really blossoming in your world that is very exciting. Okay. And that may even, um, really have to do with your long-term stability and security. Okay. Um, so something very positive for you in that energy. So let's see what else we've got for you guys. Last messages, please. Your angels of abundance. Let's see what they have to say for you. And we have bountiful nature, beautiful. The King of Pentacles, by the way, does bring about success and abundance and stability and security, but also a lot of information, okay? And again, with the Knight of uh, Swords, there could be someone delivering some news or information to you. Spending time in nature helps shift you into a higher vibration and reminds you of the universe's infinite abundance. Go outside and enjoy a walk or a hike with your pet. Meditate beneath a tree, garden, sit under the stars, or do some other activity to connect with the limited, limitless, excuse me, vastness. Okay, connect with nature, ground your energy, okay, this earthy energy, okay, and especially if you have an important decision to make, especially if it has to do with your money, either how you spend your money, how you invest your money, um, you know, or how you make your money, okay, it's very important to get grounded and get all of your information, right, before making rash decisions. And we have attracting, not chasing, beautiful, anything or anyone you chase after will run the other way because of 
of the fears underlying chasing energy. Instead, attract what you need by sending out love, gratitude, and welcoming energy. Great advice, right? You attract things to you. You don't need to chase things, right? Things run away when you do that. If you've ever tried to catch a loose dog, okay, you know the more you chase the dog, the more that dog will run away, right? And so you need to attract it to you. Okay, so anything truly meant for you will not pass you by. So again, if someone has something here that they're pressuring you to make a very quick rash decision on, okay, hmm, red flag. All right, just should be a red flag and just, you know, just make sure that you've got all of your ducks in a row, okay, before you commit to something there as well, okay? So I'm going to leave that there for you folks, all right? I hope there was something resonating here for you and I hope you have a fantastic new moon. So we are going to move on now to Capricorn, uh, yes, Capricorn. Capricorn, hello, welcome to your new moon in Pisces reading. This is occurring in your third astrological house, ruled by Gemini and Mercury. It's all about communication, okay? Communication of all kinds, your ways of thinking. This has to do with your technology, perhaps. Some of you um, at this moment, uh, of course, something ends, okay, with this new moon so that something can begin. So maybe you are uh, have a computer or something or some device that's on its last legs and you need to replace it. So you might need to buy something new. You might, uh, you might just get a little bit lucky and stumble across something on sale that you've been wanting for a while. Might be a little bit of magic in the air for you. Okay, this uh, third house also has to do with your um, social life, okay, your, um, you know, your neighborhoods where you live, the people you surround yourself with, the, um, you know, the groups you connect with. So you might be just feeling a little bit more sociable at this time, okay? You might even be reassessing because we do have thinking energy with this, okay? You might be reassessing the connections in your life and the people that you do spend time with, okay? We do quite often evolve, okay? Um, evolution is good, um, but sometimes what happens in that is we kind of change a little bit and we don't quite feel um, like we're connected with certain people around us anymore. So we feel like this drifting away energy a little bit. So you may be looking at those connections in your life and seeing where do you need to make some change, right? Especially if there's some toxic people around you or something, or there's just some people that, you know, you always just feel like you need to be on guard with, and you might be just like, you know what, I'm too old for this. And uh, so you might just be like really moving away from their energy in some way. Okay. But the third house can also bring about um, a little bit of travel, some quick trips. So you might be, um, you know, making some plans or going on like a quick little road trip at this time, or maybe you're going to be a tourist in your own town and, you know, go out for a night on the town and spend your night in a hotel or something, just a little quick getaway for yourself. And you may be, um, you know, involving friends or family or a significant other in that area as well. But this is about expansion of your mind, believing in yourself, really thinking about what it is that you want. This could be a time when you're expanding your knowledge, you're learning about things, Okay, or you're just seeing the big picture. All right, something in your world is changing your perception of things. All right, so some great energy, a great expansive energy. But when we have Mercury um, really at play for you there, manifest away, okay? What do you want to attract into your life? What new or improved things do you want to blossom in your world? Be very, very clear and then speak your truth to the universe because you do have this really wonderful connection. Okay, right about now, this lines of communication are open for you. Oh, and look at that. We've got Gemini energy matching your third house. Okay, and we've got clear your mind. What do you need to declutter? Okay, where do you need clarity? Where do you need to focus, right? This crystal clear communication is all opening up for you. So it's all about the mind for you right now, okay? It's all about opening yourself up, letting things go. Maybe you are changing your um, your view, your outlook on things, okay? Um, but whatever it is, clarity, truth shall set you free and your ability to speak your truth and to, um, you know, open your mind, right? Because when we clear out something out of our mind, we release old beliefs, old perceptions, even old knowledge, because sometimes we, as we learn things, as we, as we grow a little bit older, as we get a little bit more knowledgeable, we sometimes realize, oh, 
that way of thinking is kind of outdated. You know what? I think I need a fresh perspective. So uh, something there for you. I think there's some clarity coming in for you for something. And yes, it is needed. We've got the two of swords, the three of pentacles, and we've got the eight of cups. So this is really interesting energy that's coming in here. I think you are really trying to make some decisions about you know, the people that are in your life or the life that you've built or the information and knowledge that you have right now. And it's all helping you make a choice on what direction and what path that you want to take going forward. So first we get clarity. First we, um, you know, gather our information and then we make some moves we move forward. So the two of swords coming in here can represent that there's something that you're thinking about. You're trying to get clarity on something here. Here, okay, maybe you're trying to figure out how to make it more balance in your life, okay, or you're just going within to make an important decision. You might not be quite decided about something yet because sometimes the Two of Swords it does represent your ability to make a balanced decision by your own energy, right? By your own listening to your own wisdom, listening to your own intuition. You don't need any external influences to help you make a choice. All right. But there is this energy quite often with the two of swords that we're a little bit, we doubt something or we're a little bit undecided at this moment. Maybe you need a little bit more information to make a decision. Okay. And this can be a decision about anything, right? What you want, your goals, your dreams. This can be something to do with a trip, a journey. We do have the eight of cups here and the three of pentacles. So maybe, you know, a journey um, with friends or something, right? This could be um, you know, people sharing responsibilities and things like that. Maybe everyone pitching in um, for a little quick getaway, a vacation of some sort. It could be really exciting, but it's like, where do we go? Where do we stay, right? So there's something here you're trying to sort out there. All right. But the two of swords, whatever decisions that you're making, okay, um, it really does require you to trust your abilities to make that choice. But also, to keep a little bit of an open mind, because remember, not everything is black and white right? Not everything is either option A or option B. Can you find a middle ground? Is there a hidden option that you haven't seen yet or that you haven't thought about yet, right? So keep an open mind while you are trying to make some decisions. Be willing to, um, you know, gather more information um, or even ask for some help in some way because sometimes the two of swords can be a little bit closed off, all right? And sometimes that's not the best way forward. Sometimes we do need to open up um, and ask for a little bit of help or, you know, bounce some ideas off of somebody. It can really help us sometimes to really kind of expand our mind a little bit. All right. But ultimately, whatever choices you're making, it's yours, um, yours to make. But we do have the three of pentacles. So we do have teamwork and collaboration, people working together here um, to create something fun and wonderful and exciting in your life. All right. So there could be some other people here that really do play a key factor. Um, in your world. We do have an eight of cups, which it can be walking away. It can just be an inner journey. It can be making the choices to um, take the next steps to follow your goals. It can be also a little bit of an adventure, right? Because you're heading out into the unknown. So, you know, for some of you there, that could certainly be you making some travel plans and you, you're trying to make a decision. Everyone's trying to work together. Everyone has some ideas and you're trying to figure out where do we go? Okay. So you might be getting that all together for yourself at this new moon okay maybe a new direction okay or maybe something didn't quite pan out for you previously and you've got to change um, your destination but the three of pentacles also represents your ability to create something that you really want okay first you need to think about it and then you get into that creative mode um, the three of pentacles can be things starting to manifest in your world as well so think about what it is that you do want to manifest into your life what do you want to um, attract in what does abundance mean for you what does prosperity mean for you okay if you were given which we all have all right but you have unlimited resources and unlimited energy and potential what does that look like to you what do you want to see coming together for you in that energy okay um, but the three of pentacles can also represent um, you know being willing to learn things 
um, from someone else, seek out some advice, some assistance, some guidance from somebody, okay, or you might actually be the person who has a lot of wisdom and knowledge and you can help other people, okay, because um, this can represent a little bit of education in your third house, all right, it's a little bit of learning element there, and we can learn from the other people in our life here as well, but again, you might be assessing the people that you are connected with right with that three of pentacles and we do have eight of cups okay so there could be something that you are disconnecting from okay remember those connections in your life that maybe just aren't really in alignment with who you are today they may have been in alignment with who you were yesterday but today is another day and so with the eight of cups here okay you're on a little bit of an emotional journey okay and you may just be letting something go okay you might be leaving something behind all right but the eight of cups can certainly represent an element of change and this is where it's like, okay, I'm going to transition. I need to, ch I need to make some changes. This situation, it's run its course. Okay. And now I'm ready for the next stage of my journey. So there is a little bit of growth that comes in here with this one, right? So you can be leaving something behind, but you could be, um, looking how you improve a situation as well. And you're following your goals, your dreams, your passions. All right. Um, but this can just be a little bit of bravery, right? Entering into the unknown known with this is the next card in here is the nine of cups right which is wish fulfillment the attainment of your goals so you could really be thinking here what do I need to let go of here so that I can really um, get to the finish line I can get to where I want to get to all right and this can be it's it's quite often an emotional journey with the eight of cups okay so um, you know really going within and trusting your instincts right trusting your intuition okay and you know thinking of what makes me feel happy what makes me feel good what does that look like to me so some of you might just be right on the cusp there of having some wishes and some goals and some dreams come true and we do need to let go of any doubt or fear or resistance on our journey because we need to be prepared to, um, you know, accept our blessings kind of thing. Okay. But some of you, I think, are making some very powerful choices and changes in your life, right? Out with something old, something that's a little bit stagnant or that's creating a little bit of stuck energy and embracing something new. You're welcoming in, um, you know, some more wonderful vibes into your world there with that. So I think you're right on the cusp of something wonderful and magical. So stay positive, okay, and stay focused. So we have take a divinely guided chance, eight of cups, venturing into the unknown. Okay, all positive change and success ventures in, or sorry, let me start that again. All positive change and successful ventures involve a degree of risk, and you are ready to follow your divine guidance to new territories. As you leave behind that which is comfortable and familiar but no longer appropriate for you, you make room for more new and more meaningful opportunities. Eight of Cups. What are you deciding? Trust, your, trust yourself. And we have partnership. Allow healthful, supportive partnerships into your personal life and career, and both parties benefit as a result. You are receiving help from heaven, the universe, the stars, and from a person who brings needed skills and resources. Okay, so open yourself up to help. Remember that three of pentacles that's there for you also. I'll leave that there for you, Capricorn. I hope there was something here for you. I hope you have a very magical new moon. Don't forget to manifest from a place of abundance and positivity. All right. Always, always, always focus on the wants, not that, not the, not the don't wants. Okay. Uh, cause we want to bring in the things you do want. So thanks for watching Capricorn. We're going to move on to Aquarius. Aquarius, hello and welcome to your new moon in Pisces reading. This is kind of exciting for you here, Aquarius. This is occurring in your second astrological house ruled by Venus and Taurus and is all about your money your money, your possessions, um, your work, your income, how you make your money, okay? Um, it's also about the things you own, your property, your assets, the things that you value, all right? Your personal values here as well. So, you know, um, for some of you, you may be looking at how I make my money. Can I make more? How do I get more prosperity and abundance into my life? What changes do I need to make? Are you in a healthy, happy work environment? 
Is there something a little bit better out there for you? How can I level up my situation? You may also be looking at the your personal values, okay? And sometimes we're, you know, in a situation where we all need to make money, okay? It's just the way things are, all right? Um, there's potential for something different, but today that's the way things are. We need to make some money. And sometimes we are in a working environment um, and how we make our money just for the paycheck, but it doesn't really offer anything else. It's like, yep, I'm here. I'm just thankful for my for my paycheck, um, but I don't really get anything else out of this job. So with your values coming in, you might be having a look and saying, can I do I still have the potential to make the money that I need, but also get a little bit of satisfaction out of what I do for a living. And that's quite often very important for you, Aquarius, right? You don't always just chase the paycheck, right? There's usually something more that has to come with it. So you might find that you're getting more in alignment with your values and who you are um, as a person and what you want to get out of things. So you could be starting your own business. You could be looking for a career change. Um, you could be looking for a company that maybe has a humanitarian aspect to it, right? Um, maybe they give back to the community or maybe they're more environmentally friendly, um, that kind of thing. All right. Um, but you could also be looking at how you spend your money here as well. Okay. And you might be looking to, um, you know, have a healthier balance because the second house also has to do with your habits, your belief systems around money. Okay. How you spend it, how you make it, how you invest it even as well. Okay. So, um, you might be making some very positive changes, but it's also your time to manifest. Okay. Venus is the planet of new beginnings, the planet of expansion and growth, planet of abundance as well. Okay. So manifest in your heart's desire here and trust in your journey and be open and ready to receive because I think for some of you, um, you might actually get something that's coming to fruition that you've already manifested within the last six months or so. Um, this could be a door opening for you. Um, this could be something which do with where you live, anything, right? Something that you've manifested in. We have Aries energy here. Work through your feelings, okay? Listen to your heart, open your heart, right? What does your heart tell you? If you are in an environment where you're just not feeling good about, you know, where you spend your time or how you make your money, you know, things aren't really clicking for you. Things aren't in alignment. Listen to that. Okay. Listen to that because your, your feelings are telling you something. All right. And sometimes it's just like a passing thing. All right. But you know, deep down what is like really impactful in your life. Okay, so there might be something here that you do need to work through in order for you to make a decision. Do I stay? Do I go? Can I improve my situation? Is there something better out there for me? Um, I'm just not feeling things right about now. What can I do a little bit differently? So um, you might be really kind of um, on the cusp of making a very important breakthrough. I'm here for yourself, okay? Maybe it's just you've been feeling down in the dumps for a last little bit, and we've had some great energy coming in for you, but anytime we do have some shifting cycles and energies, it does come with a little bit of a, whew, a little bit of a fears and anxieties and things like that. So honor all of your feelings, the good and the bad, and um, work through them, right? Because if we work through them, we process them, then they, we don't bottle them up, and then we are a little bit freer in that energy. So let's see what else we've got. The Knight of Wands, beautiful, nice fiery energy. The Eight of Cups, feelings, okay, all in the feelings, and the Page of Swords. I think some of you are invoking some very positive change in your life. The Knight of Wands is this energy of following your passion, your goals, your dreams. You're excited about something. You're taking action. You're taking initiative. You're not taking things lying down. You're not sitting still in this energy. You're feeling more confident, uh, right, in, you know, in your ability to move forward or to start something new or to get something back on track. The Knight of Wands is full of excitement and energy and is always very successful, okay? Um, 
with the eight of cups, you, this you working through your feelings, right? And it's exactly what we've already been saying. We've got the page of swords here too. So um, with the eight of cups, right, you're on a journey. And quite often the eight of cups, we are just following a trajectory. We're following our journey. We're following our path forward. We're transitioning out of one situation into another. The red dress, passions, goals, dreams, because the next card in line is the nine of cups, wish fulfillment. And quite often in order to welcome in our wishes and goals and dreams and feel that sense of fulfillment and achievement, sometimes we just need to keep moving forward and just trust in our journey. Okay. We're transitioning out of one energy into another. Um, sometimes we do need to really process some feelings and some emotions and we do need to let something go in order to follow our dreams. We don't always know the eight of cups can quite often be an inner journey, okay, but it can also represent you um, moving forward and just trusting yourself. You don't always know what lies ahead. You just know that it's better than where you are right now. Okay. So, um, I feel that some of you are a little bit in between because that eight of cups really is very connected to how you feel about things. And you're making a de you're making a decision. Am I on the right track? Am I just keeping on going? I'm feeling pretty good. Great. And something's about to, um, really transpire and open up for you. Okay. Or some of you are needing making a conscious effort to turn your back on one situation because there's something a little bit more in alignment with who you are that's on the horizon whatever the journey is you are making the right choices for yourself and you're confident in the choices that you make page of swords okay it's quite often associated with aquarius your ability to keep an open mind your ability to see the future your ability to speak your truth to gain clarity and focus to start something new or to make those improvements in your world that you need to make. You've got an open mind. Okay. You're very adventurous in this energy. Okay. And, um, a lot of confidence that is actually coming through here for you. So whatever this looks like for you, okay. You're curious about things around you. The page of swords, quite often very curious energy, very much associated with the, inter uh, with the internet. Okay. Or technology. And so you might be, you know, kind of curious about the opportunities that are out there, right? Especially if you're maybe considering a career change or something. And <clears throat> quite often these days, the internet is our source of um, opportunities. Okay, so you might just be doing a little bit of internet sleuthing there with that page of swords, okay? But this can represent new ways to communicate or, um, you know, looking out into the future and making the right choices in the right direction. So um, honesty and truth and communication with yourself, but also keeping that open mind and looking to the future. And you see the very interesting thing here, Aquarius, okay, is that there's a lot of great energy propelling you forward. Every single one of these cards is looking to the future. Not a single one is looking into the past or looking backwards. This this one here, the Eight of Cups, it's like, I'm looking to the future and just talk to the hand, anything that's influencing me from the past. Like, nope, talk to the hand, okay? So you're not letting anything stand in your way in this energy. The path forward is clear. Okay, you're gaining clarity and insight and you are just making the right moves, the right steps forward for yourself. So trust yourself in this journey, okay, because I think there's, you're, you're very much on the cusp of something wonderful, okay, and also keep that open mind, set your intentions and just trust in your journey that things are manifesting in your world. So um, you might be making some bold moves a few of you Aquarius out there. Okay. You might be making some bold moves and things that are just right for you. They might be scary. Okay. They might be a little bit scary, but you've got the confidence to get something done. Okay. And to just take that leap of faith a little bit into the path unknown, but things that you just intuitively feel really good about. So let's see what else we've got here for you. We've got do the work. It's not enough to dream or pray. You've also got to take the positive action steps that you are divinely guided to take. 
moving forward, moving forward, moving forward, okay? Um, consistently working on your priorities will make them flourish like a lush flower garden, okay? Keep moving forward. You're on the right track. You're on the right journey. You're making all the right moves, okay? Keep on making those moves, okay? Whatever that looks like for you. And we have attracting, not chasing, Anything or anyone you chase after will run the other way because of the fears underlying chasing energy. Instead, attract what you need by sending out love, gratitude, and welcoming energy. Beautiful. Leave that there for you guys. I hope there was something here that resonated with you. I hope you have a wonderful new moon. Remember, manifest away and keep moving forward. You are on track. All right. Thank you for watching, guys, and we're going to move on to Pisces. Hello, Pisces. Welcome to your new moon reading. You are the star of the show. This new moon is all about you, your passions, your goals, your dreams, your desires, the things that you want to manifest and attract towards you in your life, the changes that you want to make. Um, you might be very focused. This, of course, new moon lands in your first astrological house. It's about your appearance, the face that you put on for the world. Um, and it is about following your passions, your dreams, your goals, set your intentions because the magic is within you. Okay. Embrace your true potential. All right. If any of you have a birthday right within a day or two of this new moon, this is, I mean, your ability to manifest things into your world is very powerful when this is in your first house anyway, but when your birthday is right about around the time of this new moon. This is an extra dose of magic coming in there for you, okay? So remember that you want to focus on what you want. Always manifest from a place of abundance and positivity, okay? Do not waste any energy on focusing on things that you don't want, all right? Because why, right? If you focus on it, you're going to attract it, right? We don't want to do that. No siree, Bob, okay? Focus on the things that you do want to attract into your life. Where your attention goes, that's where your energy flows, and that's what bounces back to you, okay? So always a very important energy, all right? Always an important reminder for you guys. So it's all about you. You might actually be finding yourself right about now um, quite often this does happen. Maybe you're going to spruce up, um, you know, change your hairstyle a little bit, maybe get some highlights or, uh, get a haircut or something at this time. You might be buying some new clothes. You might be looking at where you live. Are you in a good environment? You might be wanting to redecorate a little bit at this time. The things that make you feel a little bit better and things that make you feel good. All right. But treat yourself here, Pisces. Okay. It's your season. Okay. It's your birthdays. Happy birthday, by the way, to everybody. All right. And I'm embrace the magic that this new moon brings in and we've got think it through okay think about what you want think about where you want to go think about your goals your dreams your desires right think about you know what is good for you expand your mind expand your energy okay and once you once you know what you want once you get that clarity all right then you know um just Imagine it all blossoming in your world in the here and the now, okay? Um, so think about what it is you want and then get ready to take action towards achieving your goals. Remember, we are always co-creating our reality with the universe, okay? And, you know, it requires two right? Symbiotic, uh, symbiotic relationship there. So, um, you know, we do need to sometimes take a little bit of action towards achieving our goals and dreams. So first we think about something, then we gain clarity. We see it exactly how we want it, but we're open to something a little bit better. And then we execute our plan. Okay. So there's something that you're thinking about there. We've got the 10 of pentacles. We've got the four of pentacles and we've got the king of swords. So, I think that for some of you, your focus here is on your home, your family, your money, your sense of stability and security. Okay, how can I, I attract more money into my life? Um, where do I make money? Where do I invest my money? Um, you know, what steps do I need to take to get more prosperity flowing towards me? Okay, and I think here that with the King of Swords, you get clarity, a sense of purpose. You're thinking about things logically. Okay, you're also gathering information and knowledge on your journey here, and you're making a very successful decision. 
okay a really good decision for yourself something that you can live with long term okay so you might be thinking about here since we've got the four of pentacles okay um four of pentacles always reminds you number one that abundance is yours okay and that you may have gotten yourself to a certain level of stability and security but there's the need for more there's the wanting more of that but you need to trust in your ability right to um attract more money and prosperity um into your world right sometimes we doubt our abilities to do that but the four of pentacles um encourages you to put a little bit of money aside for a rainy day right um it's something that we all know we should do but we don't always do this reminds you to and make those investments that you know will pay off invest in yourself okay um put your money somewhere safe and secure um if you have an opportunity to do that but this also reminds you with the four of pentacles to loosen the purse strings a little bit okay because there is a need to save and be a little bit conservative with our money especially in tough economic times as we're in right now but you money needs to circulate okay money is energy okay and money does need to circulate trust that the money you spend will circulate back to you and you know and so if you hold on to things too tight you block the energy so this is reminding you that sometimes we do need to be conservative with our money we do need to understand the difference of wants and needs okay we don't want to put ourselves in debt just for something frivolous that we want okay um especially if we can't necessarily afford it right it's like you know will this leave you destitute okay sometimes we just need to spend our money on the things that we need and give ourselves a little bit of a treat every once in a while okay so that four of pentacles reminds you of that but the four of pentacles this dude here is looking towards the ten of pentacles so i think for some of you here number one we've got birthday season for you so i think you might actually be inheriting something you might get something very positive that comes your way okay and this could come from family um you know this could be something to do with your home but specifically something to do with your money perhaps okay because the ten of pentacles can represent her inheritances and gifts that are handed down to us something that maybe um can you can put in the bank with that four of pentacles so you could certainly be receiving something in the month ahead that you know is really quite exciting for you okay um but the ten of pentacles and you know the four of pentacles dude right this dude is looking towards the ten of pentacles here and this quite often does have to do with the things that are passed down to us right our belief systems in money and how to save money or how to make money so there could be something here where you are having a look at the things that you've been taught about money and how you handle it and investments and how you handle those okay you might be looking towards a family member or something for some advice okay but you may be just be assessing your values here okay and your belief systems around money and quite often um our belief systems in adulthood are actually um put in motion and put in place from our childhood right and so if your parents are always you know no we can't afford that and no we'll never be able to afford it. and you know if if everything is kind of negative stories around money then you do tend to be um, one of two ways as an adult you either be like really really conservative um, almost miserly or you don't give two hoots right and you're just like you spend frivolously because now you have something so you might be assessing your belief systems around money there okay but I think some of you are really receiving something positive or you're shifting your outlook in regards to your home your money your prosperity your career path all of these things all right um, but the king of swords that's here whatever your situation whatever you're thinking about you're getting clarity okay you're thinking through things you're assessing situations and then you are um, really getting clear on the things that you want and the actions that you need to take okay you might actually even be having a very positive communication at some point okay um, this can be the king of swords is the great energy for writing resumes um, for negotiations okay shrewd negotiations here 
um, for advice, right? Some really good advice. Maybe it's uh, someone in your world that can give you some really good financial advice, um, long-term financial advice there, okay? Um, but this is a very knowledgeable energy with the King of Swords. So this could either be you, okay, feeling really powerful and strong and communicating most positively, but this is the energy that you need to, you know, to find your path in your prosperities, especially if you're looking at finding a new job. The King of Swords knows and walks into an interview like a boss, okay, um, speaks the truth, is clear, is honest, but also knows when to shut up, okay? We can talk ourselves into something just as much as we can talk ourselves out of something, okay? But whatever your situation is, this is clarity of the mind, getting the answers that you need, and making a very focused decision, okay? So making those decisions that benefit you for the long term. So I really do think that you are looking to make some long-term um, improvements in your world, whatever that looks like to you. But again, you might get something that comes towards you, maybe a little bit of a surprise. Um, with that Ten of Pentacles is an awesome energy, okay? So um, there might you might get a little bit of a surprise in the next little while but manifest away because you have the potential here okay to manifest a whole bunch of abundance into your world okay um to kind of ease up your worries um and your doubts okay about areas of your life so let's get a couple last messages here for you thank you and we have pay yourself first Okay, there's that four of pentacles energy, right? You get your paycheck, you put a little bit of money into the bank. Great advice that not all of us follow. Make yourself the most important financial obligation by setting aside a portion of your income every time you're paid. The loving, This loving form of self-care ensures that you'll have savings to invest in your present and your future. Great advice from the angels of abundance, by the way, okay? Um, we also have savings. Oh, boy. Okay, there we go. This is a big message for you, okay? All four of pentacles. As you consistently save for your future, your future is saved. You do your future self a big favor as you are consistently, as you consistently set aside present funds. This is part of your self-care and path to feeling secure as you focus on your life purpose. Yeah, there we go. Okay, so um, that is like three messages of the same thing. So Spirit's really trying to hammer that home. Always put a little bit of money in the bank for a rainy day, and then you won't have to worry about your future. Great advice for us all. I'm the worst one for that. I never do that. I know I should. I know I should. I know I should, and then I never do. So anyways, so hopefully there was something here for you guys, Pisces. Embrace the magic in the air, okay? And I hope you guys have a wonderful new moon and a wonderful birthday for all of you. Um, so thanks for watching, guys. I will see you next time. Bye-bye.